Chapter 201, Showdown. Where is he? Isaac thought to himself and still thought that his opponent was a male. He has rarely seen a female who is in shooter class, which made him think automatically that his opponent was a male. He had waited for half an hour already, and his opponent was still nowhere to be seen. Not even a sound. Isaac knows that the twigs in front of the entrance were useless. His opponent must have already gotten rid of them, so they won't alert him of his presence. In the past half an hour, Isaac had a lot of time to think. He now understood the skill level of his opponent, and it was at a level that he can't comprehend. He is using a fear technique. Isaac narrowed his eyes and understood what his opponent was trying to do. He will be trying to make him fearful, which will cause him to lose his composure and concentration. With enough fear, he wouldn't be able to function properly and maybe will even run out of the cave in a fear-filled state. It was terrifying to fight an enemy that you can't see, and fear instantly makes them to make a stupid decision, which was to find the person who caused your fear, no matter the cost. Some would even be willing to die, so they won't have to feel such fear, and Isaac was sure that this was what his opponent was trying to do. Trying to make him feel enough fear so he will give up. But, unfortunately for his opponent, Isaac was not someone who would cower in fear. Instead, he will stay calm and concentrated. He has thought about everything, even about the possibilities of his opponent's skills. The butterfly was already something that made him shocked. He mostly thought that the skills would be related to shooting like his were, but he was proven wrong. I wonder what skills other has. Using a butterfly as surveillance is already insane. I wonder, are their skills even crazier than that? Isaac wanted to go out and find out what other crazy abilities marksman players has. But, spending almost the whole tournament in the cave, stuck, without being able to leave, was not what he expected from the tournament when he was chosen. Also, seeing his opponent's skill made him certain that chances of survival were diminishing with each passing second, but he didn't want to give up so early. He wanted to fight with all he's got. He wanted a proper fight and not get killed in some random cave by someone who doesn't want to fight fairly. Should I leave? It is risky. Very risky. Isaac lowered his musket rifle and walked to the corner of the cave, which allowed him to have as much cover as possible. The only way for his opponent to see him was as if the person would completely enter the part of the cave where he was, but Isaac, with his excellent eyesight, could see his opponent by a mile away. He has always thought that his eyesight was not something that marksmen should possess because it was far stronger than it should be. Marksmen are known for worst class because their special stat precision only allows them to have a good aim and nothing else. But, Isaac has found out that it was not entirely true. No one in the forums told about eyesight becoming better, but he remembered Diana also describing marksmen. All marksmen had good eyesight. Isaac remembered Diana saying about marksmen in a beta testing phase. Now, his eyesight allowed him to see fairly well in the dark cover, not as good as in the daytime, but enough so he could see ahead of him. I have to leave the cave. I can't stay here any longer, or I will die. Isaac, with frustration, thought. Maybe I can. Lure him inside. Isaac thought, soon he had another plan inside his mind. He moved the musket rifle behind him and strapped it on his back, but accidentally, the thin blade of the cave touched the ceiling. Scratch a loud scratching sound came as the thin blade made a long scratching mark on the ceiling, but that was not what surprised Isaac. Instead, the ceiling seemed to be crumbling apart. Isaac widened his eyes in shock and touched the ceiling with his own hand. He managed to take a piece from the ceiling, and it crumbled once he clenched his fist. This is not rock. It's dirt. He widened in shock and felt his heartbeat rising faster than ever before. Maybe. I can make another way out. Isaac screamed internally and started taking tiny pieces of the ceiling, dropping them gently on the ground, so it won't make a loud noise for his opponent to hear. Soon, in the ceiling, a pathway was starting to form. Bam! Soon, the ceiling started collapsing and larger but also tinier pieces of dirt started dropping down. Also, snow started pouring inside the cave, but Isaac saw the cave having more light than previously. He appeared on top of the snow pile and looked towards the ceiling, which had a hole large enough to fit a person. But, he didn't see a ceiling, or only the hole anymore. 
he saw the starry sky and the moon. A smile appeared on his face. He quickly picked up his plastic bag, flintlock pistol, and the leather pouch and strapped them around his waist. After making sure that they were tied correctly, he put his two hands on the tiny handhold in the hole's wall, which could be used to pull himself up, but he didn't know how much weight it could hold. Isaac at first tried to pull his whole body up, but it didn't work the way he wanted, and he had to use his aerobic skills. As he was pulling himself up, he moved both of his legs and moved them inside the hole, and found a foothold for them. His position looked awkward, with his hands below his legs, but it helped him to start his climbing. He managed to find another handhold, which he used to correct his previously awkward position. Just like that, he was slowly making his way up the hole. It's time to fight fairly. Isaac thought with chilly look as he planned to have a proper showdown with his opponent, and he didn't plan to lose. Chapter 202, Isaac the Hunter Lotus of Death was lying on top of a snow pile, hundred meters away from the entrance of the cave. Her musket rifle's barrel was peeking through the snow pile, and her body seemed invisible in the night. Her eyes had a tinge of green, signaling that she was currently using her second skill, night vision. She didn't seem impatient or even worried, instead very calm and composed. Rumble, a sound of rumbling came from her stomach, but she had stopped caring by that already. In one of her hunts, she had to be without eating for 20 hours, only to catch her prey. She has used to such dire conditions, but it still doesn't mean that she doesn't feel uncomfortable by being without food. Especially knowing that the young man could be eating the food which she wants desperately. But, she won't risk her life for food and especially won't make any stupid mistakes because of her hunger. On the dark night, firing a shot from over a hundred meters away could be an impossible task for many, especially because it needs great skills to do so. Some marksmen couldn't make a shot from 30 meters away, and that was in the daytime. There was a huge skill gap between average marksman players and the very best. It wasn't far-fetched to say that Lotus of Death has one of the best aims in the game. Her exposed finger was on the trigger, ready to fire from moment's notice. She had already noticed that the light coming from the cave had disappeared. Nice try. But I am not falling for it. She thought and knew Isaac's plan which was to lure her inside. But then, her night vision picked something up. Her head moved, and she saw a glimpse of something on top of the small mountain. It was like she saw an outline of a person that was glowing in green. Every person she sees while using night vision will be glowing in green, making it easy for her to spot them. And, she was almost sure that she saw a person, but it could also be an animal. Animal. Could it be? She thought that getting food by stealing from others' players wasn't what the game developers had in mind because there would be minimal food supply, and it would run out. That's why she had a thought that they must have added animals that could be hunted and get food that way. Her stomach rumbled, which made her concentration slip, but she got a glimpse of the green glow once again. And then, her eyes widened in shock as she saw the outline of the green glow, which resembled a lot of a human. The human that was glowing on the green was on top of the mountain, and he was aiming his musket rifle at someone. At her. Shit. She screamed and quickly rolled in the ground towards the right. Bang. A bullet flew through the air and destroyed the snow pile, where she was lying only a moment ago. How did he know I was here? She thought aloud anxiously and hid behind a tree. She blamed her hunger that made her from having rational thought, and even though she has used to being hungry, she still made a mistake she thought she wouldn't do. I am so stupid. Lotus of Death thought to herself and almost lost her life because she only thought about the possibilities of getting food. She also remembered the person's outline and was sure that he was the person she saw in the cave. How did he get out? Was there another way out? She quickly shook those thoughts out of her mind, impossible. I ensured that there was no way out, so maybe he had a skill that allowed him to do so. Skill of teleportation? No way that would be stupidly overpowered. She quickly got rid of those stupid thoughts but still leaned on the possibility of him having a skill that allowed him to leave the cave. She slightly moved her body and took a glimpse towards the mountain. With the help of her night vision, she could see much better than anyone would do in her position. Lotus of Death expected to see the green glow, but it had disappeared. Where? 
She thought anxiously and looked around the mountain and area but didn't see the green glow anywhere. This is bad. He has now upper hand I will have to do something. She knew that the winner would be the one who managed to outsmart their opponent. She had the upper hand so far, but she lost it and was in a very bad position. Lotus of Death stood up and was still hiding behind the tree. She took a few glimpses towards the mountain and after she was sure that no one was near. She turned around and started running deeper inside the dark forest. Her head moved rapidly as she was on the lookout for anything that glowed in green but didn't see anyone like that. Huff. Soon, she came to a stop as she had to catch her breathing. She ran for nearly ten minutes and was sure that she was far enough, but then. Bang! Her eyes widened in utter shock as she did the first thing that came to her mind, jumping to the side. She could feel clearly as something incredibly fast brushed past her face. Bam! A bullet landed on the tree not far from her, splitting the tree in half. Lotus of Death quickly turned around to see where her attacker was, but once again, she saw nothing. It seems that running won't help. Fine, you think you are the hunter? That's funny I am the real hunter. She knew where the bullet came from, which allowed her to know the general position of her attacker. Her gaze landed on the snow hill a hundred meters away from her, and with her perfect eyesight and night vision, she could see how the snow seems uneven, like someone had laid on it not long ago. Gotcha. A terrifying smirk appeared on her face, which was still obscure underneath her hood. Chapter 203, Punch. Clank a bullet shell landed on the snow ground next to the white-haired young man. Isaac picked up the shell and stuffed it inside his pocket. He was hiding behind a snow hill and only moments ago fired a bullet towards his attacker, who managed to dodge. He is good. Isaac thought and didn't manage to get a proper glance at his attacker's gender because it was dark, and the figure had the body stature of a boy at first. But also, Isaac noticed something very dangerous about his attacker. He noticed me instantly after my head popped up from the mountain. He has either insane eyesight, or he can see better in the dark than others. Isaac tested that theory while chasing Lotus of Death and managed to find out the truth. He saw how he rapidly turned the head around like he was trying to see if anyone was close, but with such speed, it would be impossible to see anyone. Except if he had something that could instantly locate them. Night vision, maybe. That was Isaac's guess, and it would make sense to him, and he decided to treat him like he had a night vision. Come out, I know you are hiding behind the snow hill. Isaac heard a shout, which sounded very female-like. I guess he was really she. He narrowed his eyes and thought why she wanted him to reveal himself. And why would I do that? Isaac shouted back and waited for an answer. His body sneakily started moving away from the snow hill. Soon, he was hiding behind a tree while his attacker's voice had become silent. Give me your food, and I will let you live. The voice, this time, came from a different direction. No. You won't. Isaac replied back with a shout. He heard the sound of a girl giggling coming from the dark forest. Isaac felt pressured because it felt like the sound came all around him. That's right, you killed my friend, and I will kill you to avenge her. Her innocent voice became enraged. I killed someone? Who? He had no idea and didn't really care either, because he knows vividly everyone he had killed in the game, and it was impossible for him to know who did she meant. He still had to survive, and no matter how he tries to reason with her, he knows that she has an obsession with killing him and won't stop until she has succeeded. I will give you a choice to kill yourself, or I will do it by slicing your limbs off. Her enraged voice rang in his ears. What the fuck is wrong with her? Isaac thought with a strange look. So, what is your choice? Isaac perked up his ears and, this time, tried to find her general location and he managed to do so. Isaac left his hiding spot and ran over the snow hill, only a few meters away from him. On the other side of the snow hill, he saw a dark cloaked figure aiming her musket rifle at him. Gotcha! She grinned and squeezed the trigger. Bang! Isaac twisted his waist to the side, and the bullet brushed right past his waist, but the bullet managed to hit the plastic bag, which exploded into pieces, alongside all the food. Tisk! Lotus of Death quickly reloaded again and aimed at Isaac but he was already slashing with his musket rifle. 
she didn't have enough time to squeeze the trigger and had to put the musket rifle as a block. Clank Lotus of Death successfully blocked the thin blade of Isaac's musket rifle. A grin appeared on her face, and she did a quick kick at Isaac's shinbone, making him fall down on his knee. Once his knee landed on the snow ground, Lotus of Death moved around her and used her musket rifle to start choking Isaac. Oh! A grunt of pain escaped Isaac's mouth as the musket rifle was crushing his throat, stopping him from being able to breathe. Any last words? Lotus of Death screamed in his ear and increased his strength. Minus 20 HP. Isaac saw a rain of notifications popping up in front of him, and his HP was reducing in scary speed. He tried to reach his musket rifle, which was lying on the ground only a meters away from him, but Lotus of Death didn't allow him to do that. No last words? Fine by me. She grinned and was about to crush his throat. Isaac felt that not being able to breathe was one of the most uncomfortable things he had ever felt and was almost sure that it might be the cruelest way to kill someone. After seeing that she didn't seem to have any shred of mercy in her, Isaac decided to stop being merciful against her. He grabbed something from his jacket, and soon, the item he grabbed became visible. It was the flintlock pistol that he had been hiding since he left the cave. Lotus of Death didn't notice it yet, but soon, she felt something touching her stomach. Her head lowered, and instantly her eyes widened in shock as she saw a very familiar-looking gun being held by Isaac. Bang! Isaac squeezed the trigger without waiting for her to react to it. The bullet instantly pierced through her stomach. Minus 200 HP. Ha! Isaac took a long and relieved breath after Lotus of Death stumbled back out of shock and completely forgot to keep choking him. He slowly stood up while rubbing his painful throat. Lotus of Death touched her bleeding stomach and became even angrier. She saw her musket rifle lying on the ground only a meter away. She quickly grabbed it and was about to pick it up, but then a foot slammed on the musket rifle, which stopped her from picking it up. She gritted her teeth and turned her gaze towards Isaac who was standing on top of the musket rifle. Isaac glimpsed at his flintlock pistol and threw it away, even though it had one bullet left. What are you doing? She asked with venom but also confused after seeing the white-haired young man throwing away his weapon. Isaac didn't answer, instead punched with his bare fist. Smack! The punch landed on her cheek, which sent her sliding several meters. Ah! She rubbed her numb cheek and gritted her teeth with hate. Is this how you treat women? Just wait until I mention this in forums, you are ruined. Isaac unbuttoned his jacket and showed the red marks and bruises around his throat. See? He pointed at the bruises and said, You did this. So? Lotus of Death snorted, Your point is? Isaac buttoned his jacket, and once his throat was covered, he replied, At first, this wasn't personal and only a game, which should be enjoyed, but you made it very personal. Haha, <laughs> what are you, a kid? Lotus of Death put her hands in front of her and grinned, This is nothing compared to the real world, where I fought against wolves and bears. No, you didn't fight against them. Isaac clenched his fist and continued, You ambushed them and didn't let them even fight back, just like you tried to do with me, isn't that right? Her eyebrow twitched as she screamed, Enough talking, I will kill you. Her words were cut off as Isaac's punch landed on her cheek making her fall down on the ground. Chapter 204, Isaac vs. Lotus of Death Ah! Lotus of Death screamed with her cheek being swollen. She blinked blankly and couldn't believe what was happening to her. She was chosen as the second person to join the tournament and was always proud of her skills with any weapon and used to be one of the greatest hunters in her home city. Now, she truly felt like her strength itself was nothing. Without her weapon, she was like hundreds of animals she had hunted before. Weak, without being able to fight back. B but. I I was second to be chosen. She murmured with disbelief, I I am strong. Strongest. Second one to be chosen? What do you mean? Isaac rubbed his knuckles and asked after hearing her murmurs. She turned her teary eyes towards Isaac and said, I I was second. There were only two when I was chosen, and I was the second. Well, I was the third one, Isaac said, which caused Lotus of Death to widen her eyes in shock. You are then worse than I am. She suddenly screamed and slowly stood up, 
I, I won't be defeated by the people who are weaker than I am. Don't you understand that everyone was chosen a week ago and a lot happened at that time rate? Even though you were second, you might not be even in top 10 anymore. Shut up! Lotus of Death screamed and grabbed a handful of snow from the ground and threw it at Isaac. Isaac covered his face, and once the snow disappeared from his view, Lotus of Death was already punching. Her punch contacted with his forearms, and the ground below them was very slippery, which sent him sliding backwards. Arg! She screamed and tackled Isaac, which sent both of them rolling down the snow hill. Oof! Ah! Lotus of Death's limbs hit Isaac's body, and every now and then, he face planted on the snowy ground. Soon, they stopped rolling after they reached the bottom of the hill. Patui! Isaac spat out the snow from his mouth and turned around to see Lotus of Death standing up. Arg! He stood up, with his back making cracking noises. Crack he patted his back and felt his muscles relaxing, which were quite stiff only recently because he had to sit the whole day on the hard ground. Ah! Lotus of Death screamed and rushed towards Isaac with her fists flying around. Isaac dodged the first two punches, and then he counter-attacked with a body blow. Pow! Asterisk his fist landed on her stomach, which made her stumble backwards several meters before coming to a stop. Ah! Uh -uh. All air left her lungs, and she had trouble breathing, but Isaac used that as his advantage and pushed her away. Her body flew through the air after a sudden attack from Isaac. Bam! Her back crashed on a nearby tree, which caused her to spat mouthfuls of saliva. Arg! A painful grunt left her mouth as she looked at the notification in front of her. Minus 75 HP, HP, 95 430 ths. She has lost her HP bit by bit, and now it was below 100. She tried to push herself up with shaky arms, which was difficult, but after gathering enough strength to her legs, she managed even though another painful grunt left her mouth. She rubbed her painful stomach and hatefully glared at Isaac, I will kill you. Ha! Ha! Isaac was taking deep breaths. This was one of the first times he had fought in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and it was starting to get exhausting. D! She screamed and threw a very sloppy-looking punch, which was painfully easy to dodge. Isaac simply took a step to the left and watched as the punch brushed past his face. But, Lotus of Death wasn't done as she unleashed her kick. The target was something Isaac didn't expect. Her kick was nearing his manhood, which had enough strength to break it and would cause pain like no other. Isaac widened his eyes in shock and quickly moved out of the way, but the kick managed to scratch his lower half of the leg. Arg! He felt a pinching sensation coming from his leg, but it soon disappeared. Stop dodging! She screamed and turned her face towards Isaac, which was still obscure underneath the hood. Should I let you hit me then? Isaac asked sarcastically. Yes. She screamed surprisingly, or are you scared? What the hell? He shook his head and felt that it was useless trying to argue against her. Her brain doesn't seem to be working properly. Don't dodge. She shouted and unleashed another punch. This time, the punch looked sharper and stronger in every way. Her shoulders seemed relaxed, and her arm was stretched out properly. It was miles better than the previous sloppy punch she did. Isaac narrowed his eyes, fucking sneaky. She acted like she couldn't punch properly to lower my guard. Is she acting like an idiot too? After seeing that the white-haired youth had no plans of dodging, a grin found its way on her face. Her punch was only an inch away from hitting, and it was clear that it could not be dodged anymore. Pow! Her punch successfully hit Isaac's stomach, making him spit mouthfuls of saliva. Ha ha ha, fool! She grinned with a sadistic look and was about to pull her fist back, but suddenly Isaac grabbed her fist. Let go of me! She started screaming and tried to pull her hand back, but to no avail. I want to test something! Isaac murmured, and a puff of cold air left his mouth. Let go of me! Ha! Another puff of cold air left his mouth and soon, his lips started turning blue. Icy shot used. His hands, which were grabbing her fist, started freezing over, but it didn't do any apparent damage to him. Instead, the ice started spreading all around Lotus of Death's fist. Ah! 
she started screaming even louder with teardrops dropping down from her eyes. Her fist turned into an ice cube, and she felt cold like never before. She felt like she was dropped down on an icy river. Her HP started dropping drastically. P please. She tried to plead mercy with her teeth clanking. Be a better person from now on. Isaac took a step backwards and watched as Lotus of Death started turning into pixels. Ah! Her screams came to a stop as she disappeared from the world of white. Chapter 205, Black Knight's Defeat. Swoosh zap zap. A beam of crimson light traveled through the dark forest. Everywhere it flew, destruction followed. Burnt trees and the destroyed ground was everywhere around the place of destruction. The snow that was even near the crimson light was instantly melted, leaving a puddle of water behind. Crash! The crimson light crashed with a mountain and tried to pierce through it, but soon the beam lost its strength and disappeared into the nothingness. Soon, a dark cloaked figure appeared, he was Black Knight. Black Knight rubbed his itchy eye for several seconds, and soon the itching stopped. Bang! He quickly moved behind the tree and saw a bullet flying past him. His blue eye once again started turning red. Swoosh! A blast of crimson flew through the air and destroyed a small snow pile around 50 meters away from him, but he didn't receive a notification that he had killed anyone. Arg! He once again had to rub his itchy eye. Bang! After hearing another loud sound, he quickly jumped away, and once he landed on the ground, he rolled several meters before arriving at a nearby tree, which he could use as cover. His previous spot exploded, making the snow splatter around the forest. Tisk. Black Knight grabbed his musket rifle tighter and glanced at his XP bar. Level 39. XP. 9770 10 thousandths, only one kill. Damn. After getting so close to his goal, he met a player that managed to fight against him in equal standings. He knew where his opponent was, but he was unable to make any significant injuries to him because his opponent kept moving rapidly. It was like he never stopped and kept running around while shooting every now and then. Bang! But then, another loud sound appeared, which made Black Knight flinch, and he was about to move away, but then, with his eye of tracker, he noticed his opponent suddenly falling down. His eyes widened in shock after realizing that someone else had appeared and killed his opponent. Hey! Black Knight chuckled and aimed his musket rifle towards his opponent's corpse and waited for the person to arrive. Thank you for killing him, but you are a fool if you think I will let you live. He scanned the area and, for some reason, didn't see anyone. Hmm? He frowned and stopped aiming. What the hell? Black Knight slowly stood up and used his eye of tracker but didn't see anyone. Not even a speck of dust came into his view. The forest around him was silent, with no soul in sight. Cracked Black Knight flinched with cold sweat pouring down his back. He raised his head, and at the top of the tree, he saw a dark cloaked figure with his face obscure and his long gun being shrouded in some kind of black clothing. Shit! His eye quickly changed colors, and he sent a blast of heat towards the unknown figure in the tree. The figure in the tree jumped down, easily dodging the heat vision, which blasted the top of the tree into pieces. Black Knight saw the dark cloaked figure landing on the ground only a meters away. His eye once again became bright red, and he was about to send another crimson beam, but then... Smack! The unknown figure slapped Black Knight on the cheek, which pushed his head to the side. Swoosh! The crimson beam left his eyes, but he wasn't targeting the unknown figure because of the slap. Instead, the heat vision destroyed several trees before. Coming to a stop. Interesting ability. The unknown figure suddenly said. Grr! Black Knight's neck was aching, but he tried to ignore it, and once again, his eyes changed shades until it was bright red. Smack! The unknown figure slapped Black Knight's cheek which changed the trajectory of heat vision and caused it to miss his body by several meters. Fuck. Black Knight was becoming enraged and stopped using heat vision. Instead, he pushed his musket rifle forward, trying to hit the unknown figure with the thin blade. But, the unknown figure's slap landed on the side of the blade, which deflected it away. The thin blade missed his body, and it was painfully obvious that it wasn't even close to hitting him. What? Impossible. 
Black Knight screamed and soon saw a fist that was covered in black glove approaching his face. Pow! His feet left the ground and were sent flying far away. His flying body managed to miss the trees, but the hard ground was waiting for him once he landed. Bam! Black Knight's body landed in a painful position on the ground, and if it was in real life, his neck might have broken. Once his body stopped rolling, his body looked like it was in a broken state, but he managed to move his limbs. Ah! ah, ah. He screamed and shakily stood up. His vision was getting darker, and his eye of tracker stopped working. It had another flaw. If Black Knight's HP falls below 50, he can't use his eye of tracker. Because the vision will become blurry and dark, which affects the eye of the tracker significantly. Crack of fear started rising in him after hearing a twig snapping in half. The unknown figure walked at a slow pace. His strapped weapon on his back looked very menacing with the dark cloak. W, who are you? Black Knight uttered with a fearful gaze. He could already see his dreams of receiving legacy getting further away. Who I am isn't important, but your identity is. The unknown figure started going through his pockets, and soon, a silver colored card appeared in his hand. Black Knight narrowed his eyes and saw the unknown figure dropping the card in front of him. With his freezing hands, he grabbed the card, and once he saw the text on the card, he dropped it down in shock. Why you are? His face, which was a fearful only moment ago, became shocked. Shush. The unknown figure playfully put his finger on his own lips and started walking away. W wait. Black Knight screamed and watched as the unknown figure was walking deeper into the darkness. You are marksman? Why? What are you hiding? You get your answers, but first, keep hunting the players. His words echoed in his ears, and soon, the unknown figure had disappeared. Leaving Black Knight alone with dozens of questions assaulting his mind. Chapter 206 Bright Star. In real life. Bright Star, the capital city of Starshow. The jewel of Starshow, Bright Star, was a common sentence in Winterland. It was the city where the largest population of Starshow was located, and it was easily one of the most wealthiest cities in the entire Winterland. The city had the greatest numbers of skyscrapers, hotels, buildings, and cars. The streets and even the surrounding area of Bright Star were covered in snow, but it wasn't a soft type of snow, instead solid. The streets looked like they were painted in white as the snow covered every part of the roads and streets. People of different ages and gender walked in harmony in the street, while kids younger than 10 tried to touch the snow, but it was too solid and hard to properly touch it, and they only managed to feel the coldness of the snow. Expensive and luxurious looking cars drove in the streets, all of them having winter tires because it was illegal on Winterland to drive without. Even if the snow was melted, the roads were incredibly slippery which caused a lot of car crashes for inexperienced drivers, but then the law was introduced. Cars without winter tires couldn't be called as cars because they were simply impossible to drive with. Brightstar also had a very hierarchy-based society, but no one complained because everyone could rise in the hierarchy if they put enough effort into doing so. Many have failed in doing so, but many have also succeeded and managed to rise from poverty to wealth. Brightstar has three layers, and each one of them has its own attractions. The first layer was called the layer of tourism. A layer of tourism has the highest amount of tourist locations than all cities combined. They have locations that were impossible to find without traveling to other continents. A house of summer. A house of spring. A house of autumn. Three houses with similar names but vastly different in size. Each one of the houses represents one of the seasons, and citizens of Winterland, who have only seen winter in their lives, can go there and see how would it be to live on other continents and to feel the warmth of summer, rain of spring and beauty of autumn. There were also world-class museums and much more. Even though the layer of tourism was around the outer edge of the city, it was still the most populated and visited. Even citizens from the other two layers usually visit the layer of tourism, and some might even move there. The second layer was called the layer of feasting. It was layer with the greatest amount of restaurants and food-related sources. The biggest food suppliers are from layer of feasting, and it was one of the greatest sights in the entire winterlight. It has been said that layer of feasting always has a scent of food in the air, 
and the greatest chefs in Winterland were born from there. Final Lair was a somewhat closed community, with commoners not allowed to enter. Rarely anyone from Lair of Tourism was allowed, but there were many wealthy people from Lair of Feasting who were allowed to live in the Final Lair. The Final Lair was called Lair of Nobility. As the name suggested, it was where the wealthy people from Starshow lived. It was located at the center of the Bright Star, and it was surrounded by large metallic fences. The beauty of the houses was a source of motivation for the younger generation. They became motivated after seeing the places because they started dreaming about living in such luxurious conditions. That was what Bright Star's government planned, to make the younger generation more motivated so that the younger generation would secure their future. But, only one of ten will succeed, but that was enough, and when there were over a thousand graduates with each year, that one will be multiplied, and soon it was hundred successful younger generation members. Currently, in a layer of nobility, there was a mansion that looked quite similar to hundred other mansions, and each one of them had a luxurious car in the yard, while beautiful women and handsome men were exiting and entering the mansions. Professional-looking servants were cleaning the yards, and the same sight was seen in almost every one of the yards. The mansion, almost identical to others, had metal gates and fences surrounding the yard. But, no servants were seen in the yard. The yard was easily around 50 meters in length, which was incredibly large for a simple yard, but it was a common sight in layer of nobility. On top of the metal gates, a sign was hanging. The edges of the layer were golden in color with text in silver. Whitelock, a name that was incredibly famous in Snowstar was also found in Brightstar. Currently, inside the house, a meeting was currently being held. There were dozens of older men and women sitting around a round table in the living room. They all had a plate of fancy-looking food in front of them and a glass of wine. Malcolm, are the rumors true? A man around his fifties asked from a black-haired man who was sitting next to an elderly woman, who still looked quite attractive even though her hair was getting grayer. The elderly woman smiled and took a sip of the wine. Malcolm, who heard the question puffed his chest, depends. What are you talking about? Maxwell's son will be visiting, isn't that right? Another old woman asked, who had pair of expensive-looking earrings hanging from her ears. Madison, you must be excited. Another old woman, who was sitting next to the attractive older woman said. The attractive old woman, whose real name was Madison Whitelock, nodded with a slight giggle escaping her mouth. Even though she had obvious signs of getting old, she still had her own kind of charm around her. I am, but this stubborn old goat is trying to act tough, even though he is as excited. Madison looked at her husband, Malcolm, who was flexing his muscular arms, trying to act like he didn't know what she was talking about. HMPH. Malcolm snorted and turned away, but that only earned a round of chuckles from the people present. Madison shook her head and glanced at the clock on the wall. Surprisingly, it only showed that the time was 1 p.m. The date was still showing Wednesday, which means that while the legacy tournament has lasted over 10 hours, only one hour has passed in real life. She instantly looked impatient after knowing that they would have to wait the whole day before they could meet their grandchild. Chapter 207 Bright Star's Nobility Don't speak nonsense. Malcolm said and gulped the wine down his throat, but his cheeks didn't even redden, knowing Maxwell, his son must be a bookworm as well. Madison rolled her eyes, old fool, then why have you started reading books? Cough Malcolm went into a coughing fit, and after seeing everyone having knowing smiles, he tried to shrug it off. Ahem, what? Can't I read? Am I not allowed to? Madison rubbed her forehead and was impressed by her husband's thick skin, which even a steel sword can't penetrate. He never changes. A woman next to Madison shook her head. She had hair that was turning from brown to gray with wrinkles about to form her in the corner of her eyes. She was part of Bright Star's nobility, and her family was one of the most famous ones in the entire star show. Her name was Layla Blue Sky. Next to her was her husband, who was wearing a monocle on his right eye and a lengthy beard, which reached all the way to his chest, which made trademark description of his. His name was Leonardo Blue Sky. Leonardo rubbed his lengthy beard and has known Malcolm for several decades. He goes often hunting with him, and has gotten used to his stubborn personality. 
Your grandchild is 18 years old, correct? An old man with grayish hair and a wrinkly face asked from the other side of the table. His name was Marshall Snowflower, and he was president of a pharmaceutical company called Snowflower. They are one of the lead medical suppliers, and their company was starting to spread to nearby countries' continents. Unlike others, he was sitting alone, the reason was unknown, but no one seemed to mention anything about it. That's correct, Malcolm said towards Marshall, who was his childhood friend, and with his own eyes, he witnessed how his friend became a titan of the pharmaceutic business. Same age as my grandchild. Marshall murmured, and his aged face became filled with sorrow, even after seeing all the medicines in the world. Winter illness is still something that I cannot cure, and it is about to take another important person from me. He almost broke the wine glass that was in his hand, but no one noticed the sudden change in his face except his longtime friend, Malcolm. Malcolm sighed deeply, first, he lost his wife because of that cursed illness, and now his granddaughter. How tragic. How is your granddaughter doing? Malcolm asked, which caused a silence to surround the room. Madison widened her eyes and elbowed her husband's waist while signaling with her eyes. What are you saying? She screamed internally, and everyone knew that it was a very sensitive topic. Marshall froze but soon. Replied, she is doing. Better and she will be visiting us in few days. In a few days? Are you sure it's a good idea? Madison asked with worry and knew very well how deadly the illness was. Yes, she had another surgery, and she needs a few days to fully recover from it, but the surgery helped to slow down the illness, and she might be able to spend the next few months outside the hospital. That's wonderful, Madison replied, but a severe look didn't leave her face. Surgery will only make the patient temporarily fine, but another suffering will be ahead once the effect disappears. Anyway, let's change the topic. I don't want to ruin the gathering. Marshall chuckled and said, I was snooping around, and I heard that one of your grandchildren had an accident year ago? Malcolm and Madison grimaced but nodded. That's horrible what happened to him, Marshall said and was genuinely stunned after hearing the news. Something like that happening was definitely out of the ordinary, and even the chance of dying was relatively high. Whoever did that will be brought to justice, Madison said and took a sip of the wine. Clink clink suddenly, Layla used her spoon and clinked the glass several times, which attracted everyone's attention. This meeting was supposed to be light-hearted. She giggled, making the heavy atmosphere disappear into a cloud of smoke. Madison smiled and put the glass down on the table. That's right, enough of the younger generation, and it is time to talk about something else. Malcolm, you are going for the hunting trip on Friday? Leonardo asked. Yes, maybe we should gather up the group of old men like us and go for a few hours. Maybe we get lucky, Malcolm replied. Are you sure it's a good time? Madison asked and continued. Our grandchild is coming to visit us first time ever, and it might be time for us to apologize for our stupid behavior when we still were young. Sorry about that. Layla Riley smiled. It was her and Madison's idea to have their children marry with each other, but that ended very badly. Madison was always worried about Maxwell choosing the wrong one, and that feeling became more intense after seeing him falling in love with that shopkeeper. She thought that he was being tricked, and she wanted to marry him because of his wealth. But, she has realized that she was very wrong and Isabella was the best possible wife for their son. It's not your fault. Madison shook her head, it is mine. I should have talked with Maxwell and not force him. They sighed in unison and wished that they had the power to travel back in time. Malcolm scratched his cheek and said with some uncertainty, maybe he can come with me to hunting? Madison's eyebrow twitched, and she snapped, are you planning to force him as you did with our son? Is your brain rotten? Her face became red, with smoke coming from her ears. Layla Riley smiled and patted Madison's head. Madison soon calmed down but still glared at her husband. Malcolm paled and waved his hand, oh of course not. We won't force him to do anything. She said with a chilly look, if he wants to, he can go hunting with you, but do not pressure him. All right. Malcolm wiped his sweat and glimpsed at the clock that was ticking down so slowly. Chapter 208, Attack of the Wolves. In White Online. The snow forest where Legacy Tournament was being held was getting brighter. 
the long and cold night was over. A cold and chilly wind blew past the forest, sending a scent of nature in the air, the snow reflected the image of a sun that was shining up in the sky. Instantly after the forest became brighter, gunshots followed. Bang! Bang! Bullets flew in the air, destroying trees and nature. Somewhere in the forest, in a dimly lit cave, a white-haired young man was packing his items. Isaac stayed a whole night in his cave, which didn't have as much cover after the ceiling crumbled, but it was enough for him. After the night, he realized how long the tournament would last. Today I was supposed to leave for Brightstar. I hope my grandparents won't be angry at me for being late. He thought because he didn't know that the time was moving slower in real life. It has been only around two hours in real life, while the tournament has soon lasted 24 hours. Isaac glanced at the number of contenders left and was shocked to see only 70 remaining. 42 died on the first day. He was somewhat proud of surviving, but now the hard part began. He left the cave and moved quickly. Isaac had a location on his mind, where he wanted to be desperately, but reaching that place was an entirely different matter. Snowy terrain and trees covered his vision. Everywhere he turned his head, the same view was shown. It was incredibly beautiful but also scary at the same time. Bang! Isaac came to a stop and turned his head to the left. He saw birds flying away after a loud sound appeared. He narrowed his eyes and noticed that it didn't come from far away. Instead, there might be less than 500 meters distance between him and the players who were fighting. He didn't want anything to do with this because that sound alone attracted every one player who was near, and he still had his own goal in mind. Huff. Isaac started running, trying to increase the distance as much as possible before more players arrived. After half an hour of running in silence, he saw something shocking in the distance. In the distance, dozens of broken trees and the destroyed ground were seen. It was like a battlefield of titans, and Isaac knew whoever was fighting here was incredibly powerful. But, looking at the signs of the battle, he knew that it happened last night. But, just to be sure, Isaac avoided the area and made a slight detour. Soon, the area of destruction was left behind, and Isaac continued his journey. After another half an hour, he reached an area where he could already see his destination. After killing Lotus of Death, he quickly rushed back to his cave and climbed to the top of the small mountain, where he could see much farther than from the tree. It was very dark, but he still saw something fascinating. It seems that the forest wasn't only a forest. Like in Forest of Unknown, there was a sign of civilization in the snow forest. Isaac exited the forest and appeared in front of a frozen sign. We co e, letters were missing, but Isaac knew what it was supposed to say. Welcome. He looked past the sign and saw dozens of buildings that were mostly frozen. They were wooden buildings with the wooden part being completely covered in ice and windows that had a layer of ice, which blocked from Isaac seeing inside the buildings. In the middle of the small village was a water well, but it was fully covered in snow. Crunch Isaac started walking deeper inside the village, his shoes landing on top of the snow making a trail of footprints behind him. He walked past the well and saw it being fully covered in snow, maybe even a layer of ice that completely blocked it. The village was surrounded by the snow forest, covered by trees from every side. Isaac was sure that nobody would be able to find the village, maybe with great luck. But, even if someone found it, Isaac debated whether they would find anything useful from here. They could take shelter, but he doubted that it would be warm inside the frozen buildings. Soon, he reached the end of the village and saw the biggest building so far. It had two floors with cracked windows, but the building wasn't frozen, instead covered in a thick layer of snow. On top of the building were five steps of wooden stairs that were covered in ice. Isaac put his right foot on top of the first step and almost slipped, but he grabbed the handrails and slowly started walking up the stairs. Only those five steps took him 30 seconds. After reaching the top, he went straight to the wooden doors that were tightly shut. First, he tried to push it open, but it didn't even budge. Bam! Then, he tried kicking. This time, the door showed signs of moving, but it didn't open. After kicking didn't help, he looked around the building, trying to find another place to enter, but there weren't any. 
Isaac moved to the cracked windows and looked inside, but the interior was very dull. The floor was covered in snow, while the items inside the building were destroyed into pieces. He shook his head and walked down the stairs, again with the help of handrails. He thought he would be able to get something from the biggest building, but it was a long shot. Looking around the village, he hoped that there would be food, but nothing could survive in there. Isaac started walking again, but after only taking a few steps, he came to a stop. Every player stopped. Everyone froze. No one could even breathe or blink. What is happening? Isaac screamed inside his mind and saw the snowflakes dropping down from the sky, but he was unable to move for some reason. Soon, every player heard a voice inside their mind. The second phase of the tournament shall begin. Attack of the Wolves. Good luck, and whoever survives till the end of this phase will be the final contenders. It was the same voice they heard when they were first teleported. Bang! A sound appeared. Chapter 209, Flaming Wolf. After the sound appeared, everyone was able to move again. Isaac instantly looked towards the sky and saw a single bullet flying straight towards the blue sky. The bullet looked simple, but it was oozing with power. Bang! Once the bullet reached a high enough altitude, it exploded, and the rain of millions of smaller bullets appeared. Boom! Bam! Boom! Kaboom! Ba thump! Isaac's heartbeat started racing as he watched the destruction, which was caused by a single bullet. The places where the miniature bullets landed were soon lit in flames, and from the fire, wolves appeared. The wolves had fur that was on fire, and their claws were like blades. Swoosh asterisk soon, the claws also turned into flames, and the snow below them melted away instantly. A W O O O O O O O O O O O O O O Tens of thousands of howls appeared, and everyone instantly understood that this was a power that was above mortal men. Isaac looked towards the forest, which was surrounding the village. He could see a cloud of smoke appearing from everywhere, even managed to see one coming from less than a hundred meters away. A woo! A wolf's howling came from the forest, and from there, a large four-limbed figure with flaming fur appeared. Grr! The wolf that appeared was growling menacingly with saliva trickling down from the gaps of its sharp teeth. Isaac quickly grabbed the musket rifle and aimed it towards the wolf. Swoosh! The wolf leapt into the air and slashed with its flaming blade-like claws. Isaac rolled on the ground to the side and heard the ground breaking not far from him. Once the wolf landed on the ground, the snow melted away, and its massive body caused the earth to crack apart. Grr! The wolf turned its large head towards Isaac and opened its massive jaw. Swoosh! Asterisk once again, the wolf lunged forwards, and this time, the sharp teeth were lit in flames. The wolf took a large bite, which had enough strength to kill Isaac a dozen times over. But, Isaac had already escaped far enough to dodge the deadly bite. Icy shot used. A layer of ice appeared on the barrel, and Isaac didn't wait any longer. He fired. Bam! A muffled sound appeared. Even though it sounded somewhat innocent, the strength it packed couldn't be underestimated. The icy bullet struck the wolf in the head, but it soon melted away. Grr! On the wolf's forehead, a bump appeared. It dealt damage, but a very negligent amount. The wolf was much angrier than before. The wolf lowered its stance, and the tail moved back and forth. Isaac aimed the musket rifle towards the wolf, who was preparing to launch its deadly attack. Crack! The ground below the wolf cracked, and it lunged forwards. The large shadow of the wolf overlapped Isaac's much shorter figure. Human versus beast. The flaming claws started approaching Isaac's attractive face while his finger was squeezing the trigger. Bang! The bullet left the barrel and landed straight on the wolf's body. Isaac quickly stepped to the side and watched as the flaming claw missed his body with a large margin. The wolf crashed to the ground, and soon, the light on its menacing-looking eyes disappeared and the flaming fur died down. You killed flaming wolf. 2000 XP earned. Level up. Level 36 to level 37. Ha. Ha. Isaac breathed deeply and looked around the village, but no signs of another flaming wolf appearing. 
He was about to leave the village and escape as far as possible, but then he remembered. He, like every other player, has a food problem. Isaac had enough food to last several days, but Lotus of Death destroyed his food. Maybe. He rubbed his chin and arrived next to the wolf. For some reason, the wolf wasn't disappearing. It was the same with players, they won't disappear instantly, but Lotus of Death did because she was literally frozen. The real life mode has a safety mechanism that if someone gets frostbite or were getting so cold that it might affect their mental health, they would be teleported away from the game. Isaac got the kill and XP from it, but real life mode decided that she died by freezing, which made her avatar disappear as well. It sucked because he couldn't get her bullets, but he thought he had enough to last till the end. He crouched next to the dead wolf and touched its fur, which was still very warm. Rumble, ah! Isaac bit his lip after his stomach rumbled, and he wasn't sure whether he could concentrate properly without food. He has gotten used to having his belly filled during his childhood and rarely has he felt this much hunger. Maybe it was the first time. It started distracting him, which was a bad sign. With no choice left, he used the thin blade of the musket rifle and started gathering the meat. He threw the organs, etc., away. No matter how hungry he was, he won't eat those, no matter how desperate his situation was. Soon, a few piles of fur and animal meat was next to him. He wiped his sweat and started carrying them, but he thought that leaving the village like this was a suicide. He tried his luck and went back to the largest building. It was a difficult task to reach the top of the stairs, but he managed to do so after a minute. Crack asterisk Isaac smashed the windows to pieces with his elbow and threw the meat and fur inside the building before climbing inside. Thud, ouch! He accidentally landed on his butt, which caused a grunt of pain to escape his mouth, but the pain soon subdued, and he could concentrate on the task ahead. Inside the building, he saw a table that had fallen down, but it seemed to be the only item that wasn't broken. He turned it over and put it gently on the floor. After that, he dumped the meat and the fur on top of it. Creak asterisk the table creaked and shook after the sudden weight appeared, but it didn't break apart. Isaac took a deep breath and was about to go back to the wolf because there might be something else left, but his steps soon came to a halt. From the broken window, he could perfectly see towards the village's entrance, and the sight made him truly fearful. One, two, five, ten. He saw in total ten flaming wolves suddenly appearing. They sniffed the air, and soon, they found the dead wolf. Oh, ooh. They started howling in anger and made sure to kill the person who killed one of their brothers. Chapter 210 Isaac vs. Alpha Pack. Sniff the flaming wolves sniffed their dead brother, but they smelled another scent lingering in the air. Also, they smelled the scent of their brother from a different place. Their fierce red eyes turned towards the large building. Grr. They slowly started moving closer to the building. Inside the building, Isaac slowly moved away from the window and started approaching the stairs that led to the second floor. He left the meat and fur behind because the wolves could smell it from a mile away. Creek Isaac grimaced after taking the first step on the stairs. A loud creaking sound appeared, and he wasn't sure whether it could hold his weight. Creak but, he also heard the same creaking noise coming from outside, the wolves were getting near. Creak creak he quickened his pace, skipped as many steps as possible, and only had to step on three steps to reach the top. But he couldn't go any quieter. After reaching the second floor, the floor was filled with dozens of boxes. The boxes were covered in a thick layer of dust, making it clear that no one had been here for several decades. Bam! Isaac's face changed shades after hearing the sound of the door getting exploded into pieces. And soon, more creaking noises appeared as the wolves entered the building. Isaac tiptoed towards a nearby box. He used his sleeve to clean the dust so that he could open it. The edges of the boxes were slightly frozen, but he only had to increase the strength of his arms to open it. Even though his body didn't hold as much strength he had hoped, it was still enough. After the box was opened enough, he looked inside and widened his eyes in shock. The box was packed with clothing made of animal fur. They seemed to be in perfect condition. Whoever made them obviously cared a lot about the clothes and managed to make them perfect. 
Creak the sound of a wolf nearing the stairs was getting near. Isaac jumped inside the box and was about to close the box, but then he noticed that he couldn't lie down with his musket rifle. Shit. He cursed out of habit and took off his musket rifle before putting it gently down on the ground, right behind the box so that it won't be noticed by the wolves. After he was done, he closed the box and lied down on top of the pile. Darkness surrounded him, and his heart started racing. Ba thump! Ba bump! Creak crack! Isaac closed his eyes and heard the stairs breaking down, he hoped that it would stop the wolves, but it didn't. The sound was getting nearer, and soon, he heard the sound of fire crackling. Crackle a scent of something burning reached Isaac's nose, which made him grimace. Creak he stopped breathing as someone arrived on the same floor where he was. Grr! Distinct sound of wolf growling traveled to his ears. Isaac unbuttoned his camouflage jacket, and underneath the coat, a flintlock pistol became visible. He took the flintlock pistol and felt the gun's weight on his hand. He knew that there were two bullets inside. It gave him two shots to finish off the wolf. Bam, the box started shaking. The wolf was striking its massive head on the box like it knew that something was inside. Fuck it. Isaac kicked the top of the box away, which revealed him to the wolf. Oh, ooh. The wolf howled, and its sharp teeth started burning. Fuck you. Ichiro touched the wolf's nose with the barrel of flintlock pistol and fired. Bang! The bullet pierced through the skull of the wolf effortlessly, but... A W O O O O O O. The wolf didn't die. A narrow hole was on the wolf's face, but it still didn't die. The flintlock pistol doesn't have enough firepower to kill a creature of such level, but... I have a second bullet too. Isaac changed the aim and aimed at the wolf's eye instead. Bang! The bullet landed on the wolf's eye, and this time, the whole head exploded. Sending a rain of blood and pieces of its skull flying everywhere. Isaac's attractive and delicate looking face was instantly dyed in red. Patui! He spat out the blood that managed to enter his mouth. A W O O O O O O O O. Sound of wolves came from the downstairs, and he heard how they were rushing towards the second floor. Isaac put the flintlock pistol inside his jacket and buttoned it back on, which covered the pistol and the armor he was hiding. He jumped out of the box and grabbed his musket rifle. He tried to find a way out with an anxious look, and behind the boxes, he noticed a window. Isaac quickly jumped over the boxes and kicked at the window, sending broken glass pieces flying around. He used his elbow to destroy the rest of the window so that his body could fit. But then, Bam! Isaac turned around saw a crowd of wolves appeared from the stairs. The wolf that was in front of others leapt towards Isaac with its massive jaw wide open. Isaac quickly exited the building through the window, and now he was standing on top of a balcony, with a long fall ahead. He stopped to think about the best way to jump down, but that cost him dearly. Crash! The wolf crashed through the wooden wall and appeared right on top of Isaac. Its massive body crashed onto Isaac, which made both of their bodies to crash through the wooden handrail. Crack asterisk Isaac widened his eyes in shock after seeing him falling down while a massive wolf was trying to bite at him. Bam asterisk the wolf was the first to crash onto the hard ground, and Isaac was the second one, but he landed on top of the wolf's flaming body. Arg! Isaac quickly jumped away while his camouflage outfit was on fire. He quickly started rolling on the snowy ground, which soon killed the fire, but a large black mark was on his shoulder. Grr! The wolf stood up and turned around to glare at Isaac with murderous intent. The rest of the wolves jumped down from the second floor and landed next to their alpha. Isaac looked at the sight and sighed deeply, I am in trouble. Chapter 211, Isaac's Dignity Isaac, with shaky hands, aimed the musket rifle at the largest wolf, who seemed to be the Alpha. The Alpha growled menacingly, and a small fireball appeared on its throat. The fireball started growing bigger and bigger until it was too big to keep inside its mouth. A W O O O O O O O. With a mighty cry, the fireball left its mouth, which caused a chain reaction, and a massive blast of fire appeared in front of the wolves. The blast of the fire melted away the snow around the village. 
The frozen buildings fell apart after the ice, which was the only thing keeping the buildings standing, melted away. Isaac crossed his arms and watched as the fire raged around him. The buildings that broke apart were soon lit in flames. The Alpha and the rest of the wolves stomped over the fire and surrounded Isaac. Isaac kept turning circles, his musket rifle in aiming position. Only four bullets remained in the chamber, and there were nine wolves remaining. Oh woo! Isaac quickly turned around, just in time to see one of the wolves lunging forwards with its massive jaw ready to bite his head off. Bang! He subconsciously squeezed the trigger. The bullet landed perfectly on the wolf's face. Spurt! The head exploded, and the massive body of the wolf fell down to the ground. You killed Flaming Wolf! 2000 XP earned! Oh woo! The wolves howled angrily, and Isaac didn't even have time to react as he felt a stinging pain in his lower leg. Spurt! A rain of blood appeared, which shocked Isaac. He lowered his head and saw one of the wolves chewing on his leg. Grr! The wolf kept growling while trying to bite through the bone, which wasn't far away from happening. Bang! Isaac fired his musket rifle and watched as the wolf's head exploded into a bloody mist. But, his lower leg had a massive bite mark, which made him feel lightheaded. After the wolf died, Another wolf lunged forwards and slashed with its flaming claw. Spurt! The claw slashed through his flesh and sent him crashing down to the ground. His vision was getting darker as the wolves' shadows were nearing him. Minus 190 HP. HP, 99 420ths lizard scale armor effect. Arg! Isaac used the musket rifle to stand, but instantly after he stood up, another wolf lunged towards him and crashed onto him. Pa! His eyes widened in shock, and a mouthful of blue blood left his mouth. Crash asterisk his body crashed to the ground and bounced several times before coming to a stop. Minus 90 HP. HP, 9 420 ths, Patui. Isaac spat out several teeth of his, and he could barely see two meters in front of him, but he could feel the threatening presence of death approaching him. Grr. A wolf lowered its head and sniffed Isaac's head, but soon, it opened its massive jaw and was ready to take a juicy bite. Not. Happening. Isaac murmured painfully and grabbed the musket rifle that was lying on the ground next to him. He slightly changed the trajectory and squeezed the trigger. Bang! Awo! The wolf felt something piercing through its throat, and soon, the wolf started suffocating on its own blood. The wolf kept staggering backwards but soon fell down with light leaving its eyes. You killed Flaming Wolf, 2300 XP earned. Oh woo! The Alpha howled in anger after seeing one of his brothers dying to the weak looking youth. Isaac shakily stood up and saw the broken state of his body was. He wryly smiled and let out a quiet sound of pain, OWW. Swoosh asterisk Isaac knew what was coming. He thought that he would die anyway, so he might as well die with dignity. He stumbled to the side and saw the wolf missing his body. The wolf quickly turned its massive head and rushed after Isaac with its large flaming body burning the nearby wooden logs to crisps. With his shaky hand, Isaac aimed his musket rifle towards a nearby wolf. The wolf felt the threat of the musket rifle and surprisingly jumped to the side, and then leapt towards Isaac with its flaming claw in a slashing stance. Doesn't matter. Isaac murmured and pushed the musket rifle forwards. Spurt. The thin blade pierced through the wolf's throat and exited from the other side of the skull. Isaac couldn't keep carrying the wolf's weight, which made him fall down to the ground, but soon another notification popped up in front of him. You killed Flaming Wolf. 2000 XP earned. Ha. Ha. His chest moved up and down, and with fatigued eyes, he looked at the six remaining wolves, who were growling with a menacing look. All of them opened their mouths at the same time and started approaching Isaac. Isaac dropped his musket rifle after not being able to keep carrying it. He didn't look fearful, instead glared straight at the Alpha's eyes, which were bright red, filled with murderous intent. Grr! The Alpha growled, and its flaming teeth were nearing Isaac's throat. I hope that I don't get traumatized. I like dogs, after all. 
Isaac murmured and felt the Alpha's hot breath making his face warm. But then, Isaac heard a voice inside his mind. I like dogs too. The voice was coming from the mythical figure. Same rank as the monstrous Baba Yaga. Isaac remembered Baba Yaga's strength, but he had a hunch that the owner of this voice was even stronger. After the voice appeared, the wolves stopped approaching Isaac. Instead, they turned around and started galloping away. What? Isaac narrowed his eyes, but with his dark vision, he couldn't see where the wolves had left. The voice also disappeared. Why was I saved? He thought in his mind and tried to stand up, but seeing the condition of his leg, he gave up on that. His left leg was almost gone, with bones popping out and blue blood dripping down to the ground. After ten minutes of lying on the ground, he felt his bones starting to get fixed by themselves. Bones popped on their right spots, and the bleeding stopped while the flesh recovered. You have been unharmed for ten minutes. Your wounds have been healed. Chapter 212 Isaac's Dream The sky above Snow Forest became dark once again. The fire that was raging in the forest died down, and the flaming wolves disappeared suddenly. Snow Forest became silent and tranquil like the previous nightmare just didn't happen. There weren't any players that managed to survive without injuries. Inside the village, Isaac was sitting in front of the campfire that was located on the first floor of the largest building. The fire didn't spread because the floor was very wet, which made the fire impossible to spread. On top of the campfire, meat was currently being cooked. Every now and then, Isaac turned it around, trying to cook it evenly. The meat was getting darker in color, but he didn't stop and wanted it to be properly cooked before he tasted it. Ding ding asterisk suddenly, a loud dinging voice appeared, and soon, every player alive saw a notification in front of them. Second phase is over. Contenders. 10. Isaac widened his eyes in shock, only 10 remaining? With disbelief, he patted his head. But then, he remembered the wolves' sheer strength, and it wasn't surprising that so many died. Even he should have died, but he was saved for a reason unknown to him. He was saved by the person who created the legacy tournament. Isaac thought it was strange for him to help him and wondered if the person who owned the voice had helped someone else. And, why him? He didn't think himself as a special person. Soon, the meat had finished cooking, and Isaac moved it away from the fire. The meat was still smoking. Who? Isaac took a small bite and felt the hotness spreading from his tongue all the way to his throat. Hot. He murmured and gulped the meat down. The taste wasn't anything great, very bland and hard to chew at. Isaac grimaced but forced himself to eat it, even though it wasn't exactly the best food he had eaten. He ate for another ten minutes, and once he was full, there was still over half of the meat left. But, he covered it with the animal fur and went to outside to put it inside a snow pile. This way, the meat will be preserved. He instantly returned back to the building and closed the doors. The doors didn't break after all after the wolves stormed in, but instead, the ice did. The door was still somewhat broken, not staying completely shut, but it was enough for Isaac. Isaac lied down on top of the animal clothing, which he took from the boxes and covered his body with it. He felt warmth, which he hadn't felt ever since he came to the snow forest. Soon, his eyelids became heavier, and he fell into a deep slumber. Mmm. Isaac's body had some signs of movement. His face looked uncomfortable like he was having a nightmare. His eyelids slowly opened, and a bright light appeared in front of him. He quickly covered his eyes with his hands and slowly sat up. Isaac kept blinking his eyes, trying to get used to the sudden light, and soon, he managed to see in front of him. But, the sight was what surprised him. In front of him were trees. Everywhere he looked at, there was snow and trees. Wah! Isaac quickly stood up and moved his hands behind him to grab his musket rifle, but he didn't feel anything. He turned his head, and his musket rifle was missing. Looking at his body, he noticed that his leather pouches, which contained his bullets, were also missing. So was his flintlock pistol. He was standing in the middle of a forest without any weapons or protection. He patted his chest and grimaced after feeling his chest below the jacket, which means that his lizard scale armor was also missing. Fuck. 
and curse escaped his mouth as he looked around the forest angrily. I got robbed. Is this some fucking joke? Isaac clenched his fist and felt humiliated, but soon, he felt a hand touching his shoulder. He flinched and quickly jumped away. After landing back on the ground, he turned around to see who touched him but didn't see anyone. He frowned, but then, once again, he felt a hand touching his shoulder. What the fuck? Isaac kicked behind him with anger filling his face, but the kick only hit the air, while the person who touched him wasn't anywhere to be seen. Once again, behind him, there was a person who touched his shoulder. Isaac's eyebrow twitched as a cold puff of air left his mouth. Icy shot used. He slapped at hand. With his own hand that was covered in a layer of ice. But, his slap missed and landed on his shoulder instead. His shoulder started having a layer of ice. Damn. He destroyed the ice with his fist, but after this experience, he was even angrier. Stop playing around. Isaac shouted towards the person who was playing around with him. Relax your muscles, you are so stiff, and that is not good. A voice came behind him, and Isaac instantly unleashed another kick behind him, but he kicked nothing but air again. Who are you? Isaac lowered his leg and asked as calmly as he could, Why did you rob me and throw me into the forest? You haven't noticed yet? The voice asked. Notice what? Isaac asked with a frown and looked around him but didn't see anyone in sight. That you are dreaming. The voice suddenly said and appeared in front of Isaac. Isaac flinched and took a quick step back. He frowned after a figure, who was even shorter than him, with a ski mask appeared. Ski mask. Isaac gulped and felt his legs going weak. His trauma, caused by the men with ski masks, started acting again. Even though he killed his fears, the fact still stands that they are still out there, walking freely. The man with the white ski mask saw Isaac focusing on his mask. It was the source of Isaac's fear. Chapter 213, Dreamland Calm down. The man with the white ski mask said as calmly as he could. Isaac took deep breaths, and after calming down, he asked, What do you mean I am dreaming? The man with the white ski mask nodded after seeing Isaac managing to calm down so quickly. He was becoming more sure that he had chosen correctly. This is your dreamland. He pointed around them, towards the endless forest, which had no end, how fitting. Your dreamland is a snow forest, like mine. Dreamland? Isaac frowned. The man nodded, everyone has their own dreamlands hidden deep inside their minds. Is this another feature of white online? Isaac thought. It's not. Suddenly, the man said, like he heard his thoughts. Isaac widened his eyes in shock and saw the man pointing at the sky. This is Isaac's dreamland. The man said and lowered his hand. How do you know my name? Isaac asked. He kept looking straight at the man's eyes but had no idea how he looks underneath the mask. It would be strange if I didn't know. He chuckled and put his arms wide open. The man continued. Every living being has their own dreamland. It is a place where your dreams happen. Isaac frowned and then remembered a dream, in one of my dreams. There was an person with full white clothing, killing his enemies effortlessly. The man nodded, that was you. Isaac widened his eyes in shock and wondered what it meant. Usually, in the dreams, you are unable to control your body and it is kind of on autopilot, but if you have trained to control your mind, you can move freely in the dreamland. Wow! Isaac exclaimed. In your own dreamland, you are. God! God! Isaac murmured, but then shook his head and asked a question, then why are you here? I infiltrated your dreamland, sorry about that, but I wanted to talk with you. The man turned around and kicked at the nearby tree. Crack asterisk Isaac widened his eyes in shock as the man's kick effortlessly cut the tree in half, and the top part of the tree flew across the air until landing on the ground with a thud. The man sat down on the wooden log that was only moments ago still an ordinary tree. He saw Isaac's amazed look. That was nothing. The man suddenly said and patted the log, sit down, let's have a talk. Isaac slowly sat down next to him. Remember what I said when I chose you? The man asked. Isaac frowned and thought about the scene when he was chosen as one of the contenders but didn't really remember what he said at that time. The man noticed his uncertainty. 
I said that you were my favorite contender. Do you know what that meant? Isaac bit his lip and said, that. You want me to be the legacy carrier? Correct. The man said, and before Isaac could ask questions, he continued, you are thinking why right? Isaac nodded. He didn't understand why he was chosen in the first place. The man smiled underneath his mask and looked at him. Remember when you assigned your stats? Isaac nodded. What about it? There are thousands of combinations, but you chose exactly the same as I did. What? Isaac shouted. You are player. No, ha ha. The man chuckled. One day, a holographic screen appeared in front of us all, and the gods told us to assign stats, which we thought would fit us best. Isaac widened his mouth wide open and knew where this was going. Next day, players started appearing, and I felt. Connection. The man patted Isaac's shoulder and said, Connection that someone chose exactly the same stats as I did. God said that every legacy has one best possible host, and it was exactly the person who chose the same stats as the legacy figure. So, I am that person? Isaac asked and saw the man nodding. I want you to win, but I already broke one of the rules by saving you from the wolves. I can't help you anymore. The man stood up and sighed deeply. I wanted to give you the legacy the moment I saw you, but. He shook his head and glared at the sky, but, there was someone else who wanted you as legacy carrier as well. Who? Isaac asked and slowly stood up. A god. The man said and saw Isaac's face turning into shock. Sounds amazing, right? The man asked, it would be an obvious choice. Mythical legacy or godly legacy. Everyone would choose the latter instantly. I don't think it's the obvious choice, Isaac said and saw the man's eyes widening in surprise. Why? Godly legacy is a higher rank. It would make you very wealthy. The man asked with a curious look. Well, Isaac tapped his chin and answered, I don't want to change my class. I will either get a legacy with marksman class or none at all. Some of the godly legacies give powerful classes enough to give the player unlimited power. You don't desire that? The man asked. Well, that sounds tempting, I am not going to lie. But what is the point if I don't enjoy the game? You don't enjoy being stronger than others? The man once again asked. He kept looking at Isaac's face, trying to see any falsehood. I want to be strong. Isaac roared and looked at his frail arms. But, in my life, I have never enjoyed anything. It was like I have lost that emotion of enjoyment. The man frowned and kept listening. The feeling of achieving something incredible should feel amazing, but I felt nothing like it was an ordinary day in the office. Isaac sat back down on the log and said, I used to be able to do things that were considered impossible, but I thought it was pretty ordinary. That's why I didn't feel that good about myself. But then, he took a deep breath and exhaled, then, White Online arrived, and I chose Marksman class, first time in a while. I felt amazed about myself. The man smiled and said, you feel amazed to be able to outsmart your opponents. Also, Isaac put his hands in firing position like he was still carrying the musket rifle. But then, an outline of a gun appeared on his hands, and soon, a musket rifle appeared. To be able to hit a shot that seems impossible was an incredible feeling. The feeling of recoil rocking your shoulder, and the sight of the bullet hitting your target. Indeed. The man opened his clenched fist, and the snowflake landed right on his palm. Do you want to know how it feels to be a god? Chapter 214, Human vs. God Indeed. The man opened his clenched fist, and the snowflake landed right on his palm. Do you want to know how it feels to be a god? God. Isaac watched as the man snapped his fingers, and a gun appeared in his hand. It looked quite similar with the musket rifle, but there wasn't a thin blade next to the barrel, and the gun looked like a gun that could be seen in the present time, while the musket rifle was an almost ancient relic. Let's fight! The man suddenly said and aimed the gun straight at Isaac. W what? Isaac quickly hid behind the log and shouted, Why? I can't beat you. Take a deep breath. The man advised, in dreamland, you are God. Ha! Huh. Isaac took a deep breath and murmured, I am God. His gray eyes had a reaction. His pupils, which were still round, started changing until it was in the shape of a snowflake. 
The gray eyes started turning shades until they became blue colored. The bright sky above the dreamland started changing colors until it was in the shade of gray with clouds appearing out of nowhere. From the clouds, tiny snowflakes started dropping down. The man looked at the sight with fascination. Power of weather, pretty good. He aimed his gun towards the sky, where clouds were forming. But, not good enough. He squeezed the trigger, which sent a shockwave all around him. Bang! The snow below the man was blown away, and hundreds of the trees were pulled up from their roots. Isaac gritted his teeth and was almost sent flying as well but managed to stay on the ground while hundreds of the trees were flying away. The bullet that left the barrel of the gun flew through the air and only left a streak of silver behind as it pierced through the clouds. Swoosh asterisk the hundreds of the clouds were blown away, and the gray sky instantly disappeared, the previously blue sky appearing once again. Snap Isaac snapped his fingers, and a musket rifle appeared in his hand. He stood up and aimed it straight at the man, who was still in his firing position. Bang! The bullet left the barrel like a cannon, and it only took a split second for it to arrive at the place where the man was standing. The man with a white ski mask noticed the bullet approaching, but he didn't panic and simply crouched, but that was enough to dodge the bullet. The bullet brushed past his head and flew far away but left a trail of broken trees behind. Not good enough. He said and went into a crouching firing position and aimed at Isaac's head. Bang! He squeezed the trigger, and a bullet much faster than Isaac's appeared. Spurt! The bullet pierced through Isaac's forehead, but that wasn't all. His head exploded into a bloody mist. The man stood up and smiled. Gods can't die by ordinary means. Isaac's body fell down on the snow ground, but soon, his head started to regenerate. Soon, his head was back. Ha! Ha! Isaac touched his face and felt incredibly relieved that his head was back. Getting your head exploded wasn't a nice feeling. Thud he saw a shadow appearing in front of him. Isaac looked towards the wooden log and saw the man standing on top of it. We have still several hours before you wake up, so you better learn how to be a god, or your head will explode a few hundred times. The man smirked underneath the mask and aimed the barrel at Isaac. Wait! Isaac screamed. Bang! His head again exploded, but his head regenerated almost instantly this time. Fine! Isaac screamed and quickly stood up. His pupils, which were shaped like snowflakes, started glowing. Oh! The man looked around him, and the snow on the ground started floating. Swoosh! Soon, a snowstorm was raging all around the snowy forest with Isaac in the middle. The man was quickly covered in snow, but he didn't move even a muscle. Rah! Isaac screamed and reached his hand towards the man and clenched it into a fist, crush. Oh! The man felt the snow crushing his body into pieces, but his face still didn't show a sign of pain. Good try, but not good enough. The man suddenly flexed his muscles which sent a shockwave that destroyed the snow. Isaac covered his body with snow but was almost sent flying away. Once the man was freed from the snow, he reeled in his fist and punched at the snow that was covering Isaac's body. Pow! The punch sent Isaac flying across the air, his body moved recklessly, like a ragdoll, and his body didn't seem to have any intention of stopping. The snowstorm that was destroying the forest calmed down. Crash! Isaac's body finally landed on the ground, but his body kept bouncing up and down for a few kilometers before finally coming to a stop. Once his body stopped, his body was broken and in pieces, but soon, he regenerated, and instantly, he stood up. Swoosh asterisk the man with white mask leapt through the air for several kilometers, and once he saw Isaac on the ground, he aimed his gun and fired. Bang! Oh! Isaac didn't even have time to react as the bullet pierced through his body, which made his whole body to explode. But that wasn't all. Once the bullet struck the ground, an explosion appeared that destroyed everything in a 500-meter radius. The man landed on the ground with hundreds of meters of pure destruction around him. Soon, he saw Isaac slowly regenerating. Isaac didn't wait for his whole body to be regenerated. He stood up with only half of his body regenerated. A flintlock pistol appeared in his hand, which he aimed straight towards the man with a white ski mask. You are God, 
you can do anything. The man shouted with laughter, but, God isn't all powerful, and there are humans that can defeat them. Oh, like who? Isaac shouted back, and soon, his body was completely regenerated. The man smirked and aimed his gun at Isaac, me. Chapter 215, Firestorm. Ah! Isaac's eyes snapped open as he sat up with cold sweat pouring down from his pores. Ha! Ha! With a painful gaze, he touched his waist, which was aching. Looking around him, he noticed that he had returned from the dreamland. Around him, the dusty and neglected building's walls were protecting him from the cold. Ah! It was crazy. He covered his face, and for the last several hours, he fought against the mythical figure. And he would like to say that he fought well, but it would be a lie. Even though he was God in his own dreamland, he didn't even manage to scratch his opponent. The mythical figure mopped the floor with him. He died thousands of times, and sometimes he managed to fight back, but that didn't last long, and he was killed instantly. His back ached, and even though he got regenerated in the dreamland, some of the pain was still transferred to his avatar, but it was a very minuscule amount. Good luck! Isaac heard the mythical figure's voice inside his mind. Thanks. He stood up and saw the fire still going strong on the campfire. He quickly packed his stuff and stomped the campfire down until the fire was completely extinguished. Once he was done, he finally left the building, picked up his food and started walking towards the entrance of the village. The buildings were burnt to the crisps, while the smoke from the fire was still present. A big portion of the forest had burnt trees and ground. It told a lot about the destruction the flaming wolves brought with them. Isaac halted his steps and stopped in front of three piles of ashes. They were in equal size, with burnt clothes at the bottom of the piles. Three players died here. He frowned and looked around the forest. There was no soul in sight, like everyone had disappeared from the world and only Isaac was left. But, he had a hunch that it was the calm before the storm. And, he was right. Ding ding asterisk Isaac looked straight in front of him, where notifications started popping up. Final phase begins. Firestorm. Firestorm. Isaac frowned, but then the entire forest trembled. Crack. Bang. A loud gunshot was heard. Isaac turned around and saw a bullet flying through the air. Boom. Once the bullet reached a high enough altitude, it exploded, and immediately a crimson dome appeared around the forest. On the outer edges of the forest, a flicker of flame appeared, and soon, the fire started spreading from the ground until dozens of the forest were on fire. The fire quickly started spreading, and soon the whole outer edge was in flames. A wildfire appeared. Slowly, the fire started spreading more and more causing a thick smoke cloud to surround the sky. The blue sky disappeared, replaced by a thick gray layer of clouds. Isaac, after seeing the sight, knew that something was wrong. He turned around and started running deeper into the forest. From the sky, something started falling down. Isaac felt something very light landing on his shoulder. He thought it was a snowflake at first, but after turning his head, he saw it was ash. Ashes started falling down from the sky soon covering the snow and ashes and destroying the previous beautiful nature. While running, Isaac saw something strange. He turned towards right and saw a red light in the distance. He narrowed his eyes and, with his excellent eyesight, saw what it was, fire. Firestorm. Isaac widened his eyes and understood what the final phase was about. The firestorm will force everyone to move, which means that it was only a matter of time before the remaining players met with each other. Isaac rushed into motion and started running as fast as his agility stats lets him. But, soon, he came to a stop after seeing a very strange sight in the distance. He saw a crimson light moving across the air, destroying everything in sight. What the hell is that? Isaac looked behind him and noticed that the firestorm was still some distance away, but it was moving rapidly. Crash! The crimson light destroyed dozen more trees before disappearing. What the fuck? Isaac frowned and looked around him. He was currently in a location that was surrounded by four mountains, all of them with a height of 20 meters. Around the mountains were the forests, and far away was the firestorm. Instantly, Isaac understood something. 
This is the center. He touched the snowy ground and muttered, This is the place where everything will be decided. Crash! Isaac frowned after the crimson light reappeared from the distance and another dozen trees were destroyed. But, he also heard the distinct sound of screams. Isaac quickly climbed to the top of the mountain that was right next to him. It was covered in a thick layer of snow, giving Isaac a nice amount of cover at the top. He lied down on the snow ground and aimed his musket rifle towards the crimson light. The barrel of the musket rifle was barely peeking through the snow. After half an hour of waiting, he still didn't see anyone. The firestorm surrounded the 500-meter radius of the area, and soon, it stopped moving. Isaac gulped and knew that nine other players were currently hiding within the 500-meter radius. A bead of sweat appeared on his forehead. He kept anxiously looking around him and thought about leaving his current position. Does someone have me in their sight? Isaac anxiously thought and became paranoid. He felt an itchy feeling in his back like someone was looking straight at him. Bang! Suddenly, a gunshot was heard. Isaac raised his head and saw a bullet flying through the air, but it wasn't aimed at him. Ding ding! Player Siernan dead! Contenders! 9. They are now showing who dies. Isaac gulped, but then with the corner of his eyes, on top of one of the four mountains, the snowflakes was floating around the mountaintop. It was like someone just fired a gun, and the recoil sent the snow below him to fly away. Soon, he found out the reason for the weird phenomenon. He saw an barrel of a musket rifle, and soon, he saw a head of a figure who looked utterly oblivious that he has been spotted. Isaac slowly moved the barrel, and once the figure was on his sights, his exposed finger touched the metallic trigger. With his sensitive fingertip, he felt the coldness and toughness of the trigger, which was an instrument of death. A puff of cold air left his mouth and his finger moved. Bang! Chapter 216 Legacy Tournament's Final Phase Hmm? A man with a short beard and bushy eyebrows raised his head, but that was a mistake on his part. Spurt! The man fell down on his side and saw blue blood coloring his vision, and once he saw his vision getting darker, he knew that he had died. Who killed me? He screamed with anger, and soon his vision was completely dark. You have been killed by player Wraith. Back in the white online. Isaac removed his finger from the trigger and saw notifications popping up. You killed player Robotic Sane. 2000 XP earned. Player Robotic Sane dead. Contenders. 8. Only in a few moments did two players die, but Isaac knew that it would soon be a three. He quickly stood up and jumped down from the mountain, and only moments later, four bullets landed on the spot where he was. Isaac used the mountain wall to slow down his fall and soon reached the ground. He lowered his body and quickly started running towards another mountain, which he could use as cover. But, during his run, two bullets flew right past him, but because he had his body lowered, they missed. Soon, he reached the mountain and instantly hid behind it. Only 20 meters away from him was the firestorm, which made it very unlikely that someone was hiding near him. The forest once again calmed down. But that lasted only a moment. Bang! Player LOLOLLL dead. Contenders. 7. Everyone is dying. Isaac was tapping the side of his musket rifle anxiously. Every player left knows where he was, while he doesn't know where everyone else was. He was practically dead if he couldn't somehow get out of other players' radar. But then, swoosh asterisk Isaac raised his head, and in the sky, he saw a crimson light flying. He looked shocked, but soon the crimson light stopped, and instead of going forward, it went straight down. Straight towards Isaac. What? He quickly stood up and leapt away with his incredible agility. Crash! The ground exploded, sending pieces of mountain and earth flying around. The crimson light disappeared, but Isaac was sure that it wasn't the last time he would see it. Is it someone's skill? He thought and hid behind a tree. What kind of fucking overpowered skill is that? Few hundred away from Isaac's position. Black Knight's red eyes became blue. Damn. He rubbed his itchy eyes, I need to kill more players. Otherwise, I will be dead. After remembering the person who defeated him effortlessly, he became pale and desperate to kill more players. 
I wonder where he is currently. Black Knight peeked behind the tree where he was hiding and wondered where that monster was currently hiding. He knows that he will be waiting till the end and then makes an appearance. After he appears, no one will be able to fight back, and everyone will be as good as dead. I need to kill the rest of the players. Maybe then I will be allowed to join his guild. Black Knight turned his head towards one of the mountains, where he knew that at least one person was hiding. His blue eyes had a tinge of red as he left his hiding spot and rapidly moved past the trees, but no one shot at him. He was using Eye of Tracker and knew where everyone was hiding, but like previously, he had no idea where that monster was hiding. It was like he had a skill that allowed him to bypass his detection. On the other side of the mountain, he saw an outline of a figure hiding behind a tree. Looking at the figure, Black Knight snorted after seeing how weak looking the person was. Surviving only with camping. Pathetic. He doesn't understand how people can find enjoyment in camping. Black Knight has always enjoyed being in the front of the action. He chose Swordsman class at first but was destroyed in only 10 minutes. He got defeated by the Baby Wolves and other players. Black Knight noticed that he had no skill at close quarter combat. He died only an hour after White Online was released, but he had another VR helmet ready if the first one broke. He created a new account and, this time chose Marksman's class. But, it didn't take long for him to hear how useless the class was. In the forums, he even saw one of the king figures insulting the class and saying how useless it was. Black Knight became depressed and thought that he wasn't destined for great things. He wanted wealth so he could do anything he wanted. He was ugly looking in the real life and bullied a lot because of it. His facial features aren't something that can be called pleasant to look at. Instead, many would want to look away. That truly crushed him, and he cursed his parents for a long time for giving him bad genes. But, on the internet, he saw how people with money could achieve anything. Fame, women, cars, he could even buy friends. In his mind, he thought that everything circled around money. He became obsessed with money. Then, he was chosen for the legacy tournament, but because it was only mythical, he wasn't interested in it. He wanted a godly legacy. Godly legacy would fulfill all his dreams, and he could achieve anything he wanted. He joined the tournament for legacy, but he wasn't planning to accept it. He heard how people talked about special rewards in the forums if someone rejects the legacy. Players won't leave empty-handed, and some said that rejecting mythical legacy will give godly legacy. Black Knight believed it blindly but had no idea that the forums were made by jealous people who want others to reject the legacies so they have a higher chance of getting them. His chances of winning were destroyed after getting defeated by the monster, but after realizing his identity. He was genuinely shocked. The figure was precisely the person who insulted the marksman class in the forums. That made him think, was there something hidden within the marksman class? Could it make him rich? He didn't know, but he made up his mind. He doesn't have to get the legacy. Instead, joining the Monsters Guild was enough for him. Endless riches were not far from him, but he needed to show his worth to achieve his dream. No hard feelings. But you need to die. His blue eyes turned bright red, and another beam of heat vision left his eyes. Chapter 217 Isaac vs. Black Knight Crackle a crimson light flew across the air. A fire flickered around the light, increasing the heat everywhere it went. Once the light flew past the trees, the snow melted away, leaving a puddle of water at the bottom of the trees. Isaac perked up his ears and revealed his body for the first time. He looked straight towards the sound and saw a crimson light flying straight towards him. Bam! The crimson light destroyed the tree in front of him, sending broken tree pieces flying, but a few of the tree pieces struck Isaac in the chest, which sent him flying away. Ah! Oh. His back crashed on the nearby tree which caused blue blood to trickle down from his mouth. Swoosh asterisk another heat vision appeared only a dozen meters away from Isaac. Isaac wiped the blue blood from his lips and moved behind trees, but destruction followed everywhere the crimson light went. He rapidly moved from another tree to another, but the crimson light mercilessly followed. Soon, there weren't any more trees left, and he saw the mountain in the distance. Isaac stopped in front of the mountain and looked around him. He was on a dead end. 
Swoosh asterisk he turned around and saw another crimson light flying straight towards his unguarded face. Isaac jumped to the side, but the soft snow below his feet reduced the height of his jump. Crash! The crimson light struck the mountain, which sent hundreds of small rocks flying around and one of them hit Isaac right on his forehead. Ah! Isaac painfully landed on the snow ground with a bump about to start forming on his forehead, and also headache followed. Arg! He rubbed his painful forehead and used the musket rifle to stand up, but soon he saw the crimson light disappearing, which meant it was only a matter of time before the crimson light returned. With swift movements, he went into a crouching position and had his musket rifle ready to be fired. Bang! The bullet left the barrel of the gun like a rocket. Black Knight, who was hiding behind a tree, saw as the bullet flew far away to the distance, it wasn't even close to hitting him. Haha, <laughs> what a shitty aim. He roared in laughter and knew the white-haired youth would hear him. Who taught you to shoot, a blind old man? Isaac didn't change his facial expressions because he knew that he was trying to make him lose his cool, which wasn't going to happen. This is how you kill someone. Black Knight left his hiding spot, and his eyes were already bright red. Heat storm! He screamed, and a beam of crimson energy left his eyes, which destroyed every tree around him. Isaac quickly jumped away to safety and watched as the crimson light kept wreaking havoc. That skill is so unfair. He frowned and wondered what Arthur was planning for giving such broken abilities. Ah! Oh. Black Knight closed his eyes and started rubbing them. His eyes felt more irritated than ever before. Isaac took a sigh of relief after finally things calmed down, but he knew that he didn't have much time. He looked towards the distance and saw a figure with a dark cloak rubbing his eyes, and the first idea was to shoot, but he knew that it was doomed to fail. But, he saw something else. There were dozens of broken trees and only one remaining. He remembered one particular scene of the man with a white mask destroying a tree with a simple kick. Isaac had insane thought and had a hunch that it would work. He saw the dark cloaked figure had stopped rubbing his eyes but didn't seem to be concentrating on him yet. Might as well gamble with my life. Isaac lunged forwards and rushed towards the only remaining tree. Black Knight heard footsteps and turned his head towards the sound. He was surprised to see the white-haired young man running recklessly, and it wasn't even towards him. Did he lose his mind? Black Knight frowned. He couldn't see Isaac's face correctly because of the hood and thought that he was a boy, which was indeed correct. His blue eyes once again turned red, and the irritation returned. Die! He screamed, and when another beam was about to leave his eyes, he finally saw what the white-haired figure was planning to do. Bam! Crack! Isaac leapt through the air and unleashed his kick, which struck the tree's center. At first, nothing happened, but soon the bottom of the tree started cracking, and Isaac saw that the tree needed only one more push to fall. But then, swoosh! The beam of heat vision left Black Knight's eyes, and Isaac thought that this was it. He was going to die, but surprisingly, Black Knight's aim wasn't perfect, and instead of aiming towards Isaac, he aimed at the lower part of the tree. The heat vision effortlessly pierced through the tree, and Black Knight instantly noticed his blunder. Oh no! The tree started falling straight towards him. Black Knight didn't waste any more time and jumped to the right, but it wasn't enough. The tree landed right on top of his right leg. Ah! Black Knight face-planted on the ground and tried to move his leg forwards but noticed that his right leg was stuck. He turned his head and paled as he saw his right leg being stuck underneath the tree trunk. Fuck, no. He tried to pull his leg desperately, but nothing worked. Isaac appeared on top of the fallen tree and looked at Black Knight with his gray eyes. You dare? Black Knight's eyes turned bright red as he screamed, You weakling, die. A beam of crimson light left his eyes and missed Isaac's body, but it started destroying everything around them. Isaac quickly decided to leave and not finish off his opponent because it was only a matter of time before the crimson light hits him. As he was running away while dodging the deadly beams of crimson light, he heard a gunshot behind him. Bang! Black Knight, who was rampaging, suddenly felt something sharp piercing through his forehead. E-H-H. -H. What? His body became lifeless and a notification popped up in front of him. 
You have been killed by player King Klaus. Chapter 218, Unbeatable. HMPH, Useless. On top of one of the tallest trees, a dark cloaked figure was seen sitting, while a large dark cloaked gun was resting on his arms. His bright blue eyes underneath the mask started glowing, and he instantly knew where the other players were. He fired two bullets. Bang bang asterisk somewhere in the ground. Twisted reversed, the person who had been carefully moving entire tournament saw a chance in victory. Daughter. I will win. He swore in his mind, but then he heard a haunting sound, and he thought that it wasn't aimed at him, but soon a sharp item pierced through his eye. King Klaus looked at the notifications with a cold gaze. Player twisted reversed dead. Player Aurelin dead. Contenders, two, one more. And finally, I have reached my goal. He once again scanned the area with his eye of tracker and saw the last remaining person hiding behind a mountain. You can't hide from me. King Klaus aimed with his dark cloaked gun, and once the figure was in his sight, he pressed the trigger. Bang! Wall breaker used. The bullet flew like a missile, and at first, it looked like it was going to hit the mountain, and so it did. But, the next part was fascinating. The bullet effortlessly pierced through the mountain wall and still kept going. Isaac, who was currently panting heavily, heard something approaching from the mountain. He widened his eyes in shock and quickly lied flat on the ground. Second, later, he felt something flying past his head. Isaac turned his head and was shocked to see a bullet flying away, which seemed to come from the mountain. He stood up and looked at the hole in the mountain wall. It was skill. But, how did he know that I was here? He frowned and looked at the number of contenders left. Only two remained. Bah thump! Bah thump! His heart started beating rapidly as he knew that he was only one kill away from winning. He never thought he would reach this far, and once he did, he wanted to win. King Klaus, who was still sitting on top of the tree, decided to go on the offensive. He jumped off the tree and landed softly on the ground. Huff. He breathed out and started running towards the mountain in the distance. His blue eyes again started glowing, and he saw that the figure still hadn't moved. Amateur. King Klaus thought and ran straight towards the mountain. He wasn't slowing down, and it looked like he was going to crash, but then. Wall runner used. King Klaus jumped, and once his feet landed on the mountain wall, he didn't fall. Instead, it was like his feet got stuck in the mountain. He didn't wait anymore and started running up the mountain wall. It took him only several seconds to reach the top of the mountain. Once his feet landed on the snow ground, he crouched and used all his agility stats to jump straight towards the sky. He didn't reach the sky. However, he managed to jump 20 meters up in the air, which was an incredible achievement. King Klaus looked down, and from the air, he managed to see the white cloaked figure. HMPH. He scoffed and aimed his gun straight at the oblivious youth. Bang! He didn't wait any longer as he fired his shot. His heart was beating rapidly as he knew that he was very close, only one kill away, and then finally, he had reached his goal. If he gets his hands on the legacy, he will be the most powerful player alive. Isaac, however, heard the gunshot, and he had already jumped away. The bullet landed only an inch away from his leg and it wasn't far away from completely crippling him. Isaac raised his head and widened his eyes in shock as he saw a dark cloaked figure floating in the sky. At first it looked like he was floating. But he was slowly descending. But, the next thing shocked him even more. King Klaus' blue eyes started changing colors until they were bright red. Heat vision used. A beam of crimson light left his eyes and it flew straight towards Isaac with even greater speed than Black Knight managed to do. Isaac quickly jumped backwards and saw how the heat vision destroyed the nature to pieces. It was the same attack. He has some kind of copying ability? Isaac felt like facepalming, this is some bullshit. Where is my broken ability? King Klaus landed on top of the mountain and rubbed his eyes as an annoying, itching feeling appeared. While rubbing his eyes, he shouted, Give up! I am much stronger, smarter, and skilled than you are. Isaac didn't answer, instead hid behind a tree and had his musket rifle ready to be used. I won't be defeated by you, and no matter how much you struggle, I will win. 
King Klaus kept blinking his eyes, and soon the itching feeling disappeared, and he could concentrate again. Isaac took a deep breath and shouted back, King Klaus, right? King Klaus clicked his tongue, Tisk, you must know my status then? Give up, and you will not be bothered in the future. Sorry. But, not happening. Isaac left his hiding spot and fired. But, illusionary shot used. King Klaus quickly jumped out of the mountain, and when he was airborne, he saw Isaac squeezing the trigger again. You can't shoot that fast. He shouted and frowned. Does he not know that you can't fire rapidly? What a fool. But soon, his eyes widened in shock. Bang! Another bullet left the musket rifle's barrel, and it didn't take long for it to arrive in front of King Klaus. King Klaus was shocked but managed to think calmly. Bright red eyes returned while a beam of crimson light left his eyes. The crimson light surrounded the bullet and turned it into ashes. Useless, try. He shouted and was about to land on the ground, but then he saw Isaac doing something strange. Isaac touched the snow, and a puff of cold air left his lungs, work. Icy shot used. The snow below him froze, and without any warnings, the ice started spreading all around him, but Isaac tried to control it and successfully managed to do so. The ice rapidly started moving forwards, and King Klaus noticed that the ice was rushing straight towards him. Once his feet landed on the ground, the ice had already arrived and froze his legs. Isaac quickly aimed his musket rifle but then saw something unbelievable. King Klaus simply moved his legs, and the ice broke. How? Isaac lowered his weapon and couldn't believe his eyes. King Klaus grinned as his eyes started glowing in red, Marksman skills won't work on me. I have two skills. The first one nullifies every marksman ability, and the second one is that I can copy any ability from a person I have killed in the last 24 hours. I am. Unbeatable. Chapter 219. Human vs. God of Winter. On top of the largest mountain that was covered in a thick layer of snow. A man with a white ski mask was sitting, with snow surrounding him. His eyes that could be seen were looking in one very specific direction. In the distance, he could see a battle between two youths. His body didn't even flinch as his emotionless eyes watched as the white-haired youth was suffering defeat with each collision. But soon, his emotionless eyes reacted as he felt something coming. Rumble. The sky above the snow forest rumbled. The man turned his head and saw a snowflake landing on his shoulder. More and more snow started dropping down from the sky while a shadow was moving above the clouds. Thud. Suddenly, something fell from the sky and landed behind the man. The mountain trembled, which caused an avalanche below the hill. The forest around the mountain was soon covered in snow, and the trees were blown to pieces. Behind the man, a tall, middle-aged man with a bushy beard and long blonde hair appeared. He had a quiver, strapped on his back and a bow in his right hand. Oh, to what do I owe the pleasure, God of Winter, ULLR? The man turned his head around and looked straight at the tall man. Uller's eyebrow twitched as he started talking with serious tone, human. I forgive your insolence this time. Why have you come? The man asked without showing even an inch of respect towards God. ULLR narrowed his eyes, HMPH, I order you to end the tournament. And, why would I do that? The man turned his head back, finale has just began. Give the legacy for that weak human who goes by the name of Klaus, while I am taking the white-haired human with me. Ah! The man with the white ski mask shook his head and slowly stood up, I am afraid that I can't do that. And why is that? ULLR grabbed his bow tighter and became more annoyed with each passing moment. Well, I am quite fond of him, but I have a question for you. The man turned around, and he looked straight at Uller's eyes. Stop looking at me. ULLR took an arrow from the quiver and put it on the bowstring. Who gave you the courage to order me? The man asked and took his weapon from the snow ground. His gun didn't look like something that could kill a god. Bend the knee, or you will regret your decision for the rest of your miserable life. ULLR went into a shooting position, and his posture looked perfect. Winter! ULLR shouted, and suddenly, a snowstorm appeared around the mountain. Like a tornado, 
the snowstorm wreaked havoc, destroying the mountain bit by bit. Suddenly, the man smiled underneath the mask as he said confident words, during winter. I am unbeatable. Ha, arrogant. ULLR fired the arrow with a shout, humans are indeed foolish. Once the arrow left the bowstring, it started changing, and soon, it was pure white in color. Around the arrow, a small snow tornado appeared, which had enough power to destroy a city. The man with a white ski mask didn't shoot his gun and didn't even try, instead. He took a single step forwards. Such a simple motion did something unbelievable. Crash crack asterisk the mountain below them cracked and broke apart. Both ULLR and the man started falling down while being surrounded by boulders and snow. HMPH. ULLR simply scoffed, not afraid even the slightest, and soon his body became transparent. He teleported on top of another mountain and watched as the mountain crumbled apart while it looked like the man got buried. HMPH, suicide? How foolish. ULLR let out a laugh, but then he felt something touching the back of his head. Go back to the god realm, or this will be the last time you are breathing. Behind him, the man with the white mask was holding his gun, while the gun's muzzle was touching Uller's head. How dare you? ULLR shouted, I am God, show some respect, human. You may be God, but you are far from being godly. The man put his finger on the cold trigger, and his voice oozed with coldness, Now, are you going to leave, or do you want this to end with you on coffin? Why, you wouldn't dare. ULLR shouted while showing fear for the first time during the confrontation, My father would kill you. Question is, can he kill me? The man grabbed his mask and took it away. Turn around and look at me. ULLR shakily turned around and widened his eyes in shock as he saw the man's face. The man touched his face and said, This is the injury I received when I became arrogant at the little skill I had. Since then, I have never gotten injured. Not even gods could injure me. ULLR gulped and said with a shaky tone, M my father is strongest. M mere human like you aren't matched to him. The man put the mask back on and then perked up his ears. Rumble. Another sound of rumble appeared in the sky, but this time, lightning followed. Father! ULLR exclaimed and laughed, Haha, he is here. Be prepared to die, human. No. The man shook his head, he isn't here to fight me. He is here to save his idiotic son. A. ULLR raised an eyebrow, but then he saw his body turning into lightning. Father. No. He screamed towards heaven, why are you teleporting me back? His voice was shaking as he couldn't understand the reason for it. Rumble. The sky rumbled one more time, and this time, ULLR turned into a lightning bolt and, with unwillingness, was teleported away from the human realm. The man lowered his weapon and looked at the heaven, where the lightning was only moments ago, but it was soon gone. He sat down on the snow, and just like previously, he looked towards the battle, which was heating up. It was like he didn't even care about the meeting with God. Chapter 220 God Realm Somewhere in the God Realm There was a majestic golden palace, which could be seen even a hundred kilometers away. Even from outer space, the golden palace could be seen, and it was so tall that the top of the palace even left the atmosphere and entered the space. A rainbow bridge was in front of the golden palace, which was beautiful enough to mesmerize everyone. The golden place itself was floating on top of a dark void. The dark void was shrouded in endless darkness. Around the dark void was a golden city with citizens that looked satisfied with their lives. Suddenly, the sky above the golden palace rumbled. The citizens instantly bowed in the direction of the golden palace, and soon lightning bolt struck the golden palace. The lightning was sucked inside the golden palace, and once it disappeared, the citizens stopped bowing and continued their lives. Currently, in the throne room of the Golden Palace, a muscular man with short blonde hair and handsome face was sitting on a golden throne. He had a well-defined chin, with broad shoulders and sharp collarbones. His eyes were flickering in lightning, and suddenly, golden robes appeared all around his body, and a hammer dropped down from the ceiling that landed right on top of his palm. 
The throne room was surrounded by golden walls and pillars, while a chandelier that was made of white colored diamonds was hanging on the ceiling. Rumble! A bolt of lightning landed in the center of the throne room. A tall man with a bushy beard and long blonde hair appeared from the bolt of lightning. Ah! Ullr dropped down on his knees with a pale face while the lightning flickered around him. Once he had got his composure back, he noticed where he was. He paled as he saw his father sitting on the golden throne, and instantly lowered his head. Father! You are a fool and utter disappointment. Uller's face showed pain as he heard his father's words. I could have defeated that arrogant human. Ullr looked straight at his father with confidence. But then, his father, Thor, started laughing. His laughter sounded like thunder. It echoed far away, the Golden City could hear his laughter, and the civilians instantly thought that their King Thor was in a good mood because rarely he had laughed so hard. His laughter reached every part of the heavens while thunder raged in the sky. Uller's face became red in humiliation, but he didn't dare to argue back because he would be lucky enough not to get thrown away from the Golden Palace. Ha ha ha! Soon, Thor stopped laughing and wiped the tears from the corner of his eyes, son, you might be weak shit, but you sure know how to make a good joke. Ullr bit his lip and whispered, he is only a human. Only a human? He paled as he heard his father's voice. You are lucky enough that you are still breathing. Thor said and shook his head with disappointment, you are lucky that man was in a good mood because he found the perfect host. Otherwise, your mother would have to arrange your funeral. Why are you defending that human? Ullr stood up and shouted angrily. Hold your tongue. Thor's scream sent Ullr flying. He crashed onto the golden pillar and painfully landed on the ground with a few ribs broken. Ah! Oh. He coughed a mouthful of blood and painfully stood up. Fool! Thor clicked his tongue and wondered how someone great as him could have such failure as a son. Everyone has only one perfect host, and it is simply rude to try to steal a perfect host from someone. Especially suicidal when you tried to steal one from that man. B but, father. Ullr held his waist as he uttered his words with pain, that power I felt. From that young man. It was similar to mine. Power of winter. He isn't your perfect host, so back off. Ullr gritted his teeth and lowered his head with his fists clenched. Gur. Thor snapped his head towards the direction of the throne room's doors. Enter. Creaked the throne room's doors opened, and Thor instantly felt annoyed when he saw who had entered. The one who entered had a skinny figure with messy hair and a silly grin on his face. Loki, what do you want? Thor asked while his grip on the hammer tightened. Loki innocently smiled and patted Uller's shoulder, hello, nephew. He turned to look at Thor and grinned, Hey, big meanie. Did you come here to die? Thor stood up from the throne, and instantly, lightning started flickering around the hammer. Hee <laughs> hee. Loki giggled, but then his face became more serious, did you hear? Thor clicked his tongue and dropped the hammer back on the ground, I did. Ullr kept his head lowered and sneakily listened to their conversation. Our legacies has been spawned on the lower realms. Loki stopped in front of Thor and continued, it is only a matter of time before someone got them. Thor sat back on the throne and started tapping the armrest. Should we tell Arthur to remove them? Loki asked. Why should we? Thor asked nonchalantly. Our perfect hosts haven't appeared yet. Loki stopped in front of the throne, and playfulness was long gone from his face, your pride wouldn't allow someone weak to wield your power, right? HMPH. Thor waved his hand and smirked, no matter who gets my legacy, that person will become mighty. Loki rolled his eyes, I am not sure why I even came here your pride is as big as this fucking building. Thanks. Thor took it as a compliment and noticed that his son was still there, why are you still here? Go train to not be a failure. Ullr bowed and left the throne room with quick steps. Hey, you sure are ruthless towards your sons. Loki grinned, and suddenly a walking cane appeared in his hands, I am waiting with anticipation of meeting your legacy carrier. Thor looked at his hammer and touched it tenderly, sigh. I will miss my hammer, 
but my legacy carrier needs a weapon mighty enough to wield my power. Chapter 221 Desperate Attempt of a Week Bam! A white-haired figure crashed into the mountain. Ah! A grunt of pain escaped his mouth as he fell down on the snow ground. Minus 50 HP, HP, 245 420ths. Swoosh asterisk in the distance, a heat vision appeared. The heat vision was on fire, which melted the snow away and made the temperature rise. Isaac's leg muscles twitched as he jumped out of the way in a hurry. Soon, he landed on the ground and rolled several more meters before jumping up on his feet. Wall Breaker King Klaus used Wall Breaker and fused it with Heat Vision. Once, the Heat Vision struck the mountain. It fell entirely apart. The Heat Vision with ease destroyed the mountain into smithereens. Isaac turned around and aimed with his musket rifle. Without further ado, he squeezed the trigger, and instantly, the recoil rocked his shoulder. Bang! The bullet left like a rocket and flew straight towards the dark cloaked figure. King Klaus saw the incoming bullet, and he didn't do anything fancy. Instead did a simple sidestep and watched as the bullet missed his body. Isaac grimaced and looked at the chamber that had no bullets left. 18. Cooldown started. Bam! An explosion appeared, which sent snow flying away. The explosion was the result of King Klaus. Jumping. King Klaus flew across the air and landed right in front of Isaac, who was still holding his musket rifle. Die! King Klaus shouted and stabbed his musket rifle forwards, cloaked in dark clothing, but the tip of the blade could be seen. The blade was blocked by the sudden interference of Isaac's musket rifle. Grr! Isaac's feet were soon buried inside the snow ground, and his arms started trembling as he was desperately trying to block King Klaus' powerful strike. Useless! King Klaus slammed his foot deep inside Isaac's torso, which alone looked very damaging. A mouthful of saliva left Isaac's mouth as he stumbled backwards several steps. He had an impulsive desire to kneel down, but his pride wouldn't allow him to do so. Isaac gritted his teeth and straightened his back while the organs inside his body were disorganized. You are weak. King Klaus grinned mockingly. You are a fool for ignoring the importance of strength stat, because of that. You can never defeat me. He, once again, stabbed his musket rifle forwards. Isaac barely deflected it, but King Klaus wasn't done and unleashed a rain of stabs. Isaac was instantly pushed backwards, but he managed to keep deflecting. King Klaus' hands became blurry as the speed of his stabs increased by a dozenfold. Ugh! Isaac screamed and kept deflecting as fast as he could, but bit by bit, he was being pushed backwards. His feet kept sliding backwards while the strength of King Klaus' strikes kept increasing. But then, a moment when Isaac reached his limits appeared. King Klaus noticed Isaac's movement becoming sloppy, and he used that to his advantage. Swing asterisk he swung the musket rifle one more time and sliced Isaac's ear off. Spurt! A rain of blue blood appeared as Isaac's ear flew off and landed on the snowy ground, which was soon covered in snow. Minus 75 HP, HP, 174 120ths. King Klaus smirked and revealed his own HP bar to mock Isaac further. HP, 464 160ths. Why can't you understand the gap between us? He shook his head and spat on the ground, You are weak, while I am strong. We live in completely different worlds. Shut up! Isaac screamed and swung the musket rifle, which King Klaus effortlessly blocked. Bam! King Klaus kneed his body, and this time, Isaac fell down on his knees with saliva pouring down from his mouth. King Klaus looked at Isaac's weapon and threw it away. Any last words? He asked while touching Isaac's forehead with the musket rifle's muzzle. Isaac's tired eyes looked straight towards King Klaus and saw his mocking look. He enjoyed seeing the weak kneeling before him. I am hungry. Isaac suddenly muttered and opened his mouth wide open. Something unbelievable happened. No one in their right mind would do it, but Isaac did. He put the musket rifle inside his mouth, the muzzle touching his throat. King Klaus frowned, what the hell? Isaac closed his eyes, and King Klaus didn't notice it, but a slight puff of cold air left his mouth. Fine, die. 
King Klaus thought that Isaac surrendered and told him to kill him. Bang! He squeezed the trigger and expected Isaac's head to explode, but something strange happened. Crack asterisk the musket rifle cracked in half. Bam! The musket rifle exploded into hundreds of small pieces. Ah! Isaac was hit by the aftermath and was struck by broken pieces of the musket rifle, and his HP decreased by a terrifying amount. Minus 150 HP, HP, 2420ths, no. King Klaus screamed and looked at his broken weapon, it was a unique musket rifle. Isaac wiped the bloodstains from his face and grinned with bloodied teeth, oopsie. King Klaus screamed with anger, bastard. He wanted to rush toward Isaac and beat him up till he begged for mercy. But then, he noticed something strange in his musket rifle's barrel. He crouched and saw the barrel being completely covered in ice. He looked shocked and turned towards Isaac, you used your skill to freeze the barrel. How did you know it? Would work. I didn't. Isaac stood up and spat out the remaining blood from his mouth, it was the last desperate attempt of a week. King Klaus grimaced and angrily stood up, I will make you regret that. He lunged forwards and unleashed a punch. Isaac lowered his body and tackled him. King Klaus fell down to the ground with Isaac on top of him. Get off me! He screamed and tried to punch Isaac, but soon something solid struck his face. Aw! Oh. Isaac started punching King Klaus' face mercilessly. His arms became blurry as he punched, reeled in his fist, and again punched. King Klaus was desperately trying to block, but nothing worked as Isaac's inhumanly quick punches kept hitting him. Soon, blood started flowing down from the mouth and nose while King Klaus' mask was breaking apart. Chapter 222, Isaac's Perfect Shot Enough! King Klaus' eyes, underneath the mask, glowed in red, and another heat vision was about to be unleashed. But then, Isaac grabbed his face and turned it to the side. Swoosh asterisk the heat vision was unleashed, but it hit nothing except dozen trees in the distance. Bam! Once the heat vision ended, Isaac once again punched at the mask, and this time King Klaus' nose broke. Ag! King Klaus felt a slight pain in getting his nose broken and wasn't prepared for it. He hasn't felt any pain in a long time, but because everyone can feel 1% of the pain during the tournament, he felt pain for the first time in a long time. Enough! King Klaus grabbed Isaac's arms and threw him away. Isaac rolled on the ground several meters and anxiously stood up. He felt frustrated at the obvious strength difference, and he was getting desperate to increase his strength, but nothing worked. King Klaus stood up with cracks on his mask, he cracked his neck and was about to go after Isaac, but then saw a musket rifle lying on the snow ground. It was Isaac's musket rifle. He grinned and rushed towards the musket rifle, but suddenly Isaac appeared and once again tackled him. Tisk! King Klaus kneed Isaac's torso and felt the strength of his tackle reducing. He grabbed Isaac from his jacket and threw him away. Bam Isaac crashed to the ground and rolled on the ground with a notification popping up in front of him. Minus 15 HP, HP, 5 420ths. King Klaus grabbed the musket rifle and shouted, It's over, I have won. Patui. Isaac spat out the broken teeth and grabbed something from his jacket. It was the flintlock pistol. He aimed it towards King Klaus, who was aiming at him. Flintlock pistol can't kill me. King Klaus said coldly and put his finger on the trigger. Isaac's eyes looked fatigued with a trail of blood trailing down from the side of his face. Feeling the coldness and toughness of the flintlock pistol on his hand, he hoped that he could kill him, but he needed to be realistic. His body trembled as he knew that the chances of survival were very minimal, maybe even impossible. King Klaus knew it. Isaac knew it. He would need a miracle to win, and with only two of them in the snow forest, there was no place for miracles. I admit, you fought well, but the outcome was obvious from the beginning. King Klaus' fingertip touched the cold steel, you delayed the inevitable. Isaac's hand trembled, and the mental exhaustion was kicking in. He would want to go sleep on his warm bed and rest until all the exhaustion has been disappeared. You can proudly say in the forums that you managed to reach the finale, but in the end was destroyed by the player, who in the future will be called as strongest. King Klaus proudly declared,
It is an honor. Your name will be remembered as the person who was too weak to stop King Klaus from becoming the strongest. Isaac gritted his teeth and thought with anxiousness, what can I do? Will I lose? Why is he stronger? Is he stronger because higher level, or is he simply more skilled than I am? Or is it because of his overpowered skill? Maybe because all of them. Slowly, he lowered his arm, and King Klaus took that as a sign of surrender. Good choice. He grinned and was about to press the trigger. But then, Isaac remembered something. Sniper's greatest strength isn't the bullet. What did he mean by that? Once that thought crossed his mind, his gray pupils dilated. Crack asterisk something inside his mind cracked. Inside his brain and in the heart, transparent chains were seen. They were slightly loosened, and nothing has changed on them, but now. Something spectacular happened. A very miniature crack appeared on the chain surface. But, that simple crack allowed the bright light to escape. Soon, the cracks disappeared as the chains fixed themselves, but that alone allowed a little bit of the bright light to escape. The bright light fused with Isaac's cells and bones, while the kaleidoscopic light fused inside his brain. Ha! Huh. A puff of cold air left his mouth, and Isaac noticed something strange. He saw how the snow was melting away bit by bit. He saw King Klaus' nails having a tinge of black, resulting in misfiring his gun several times. Also, inside the musket rifle's barrel, he could see the bullet. His eyes widened in shock, and his arm, which was lowering, stopped. King Klaus slowly blinked, and his finger was starting to squeeze the trigger, but everything was happening in slow motion. Isaac raised his arm and aimed the flintlock pistol straight towards the musket rifle. Without letting King Klaus make the first move, he pressed the trigger. Bang! The bullet left the barrel and started flying straight towards the musket rifle. King Klaus had the first signs of panic, and his finger slowly squeezed the trigger. Bang! Once he managed to squeeze the trigger, the flintlock pistol's bullet was already in front of the musket rifle. King Klaus' face showed panic, and he tried to move out of the way but would never make it in time. The flintlock pistol's bullet flew perfectly. The snowflakes that appeared on the way were blown to pieces. While the musket rifle's bullet still hasn't left the barrel. Soon, the flintlock pistol's bullet arrived in front of the musket rifle. Instantly, King Klaus realized that the bullet wasn't aimed at him. The flintlock pistol's bullet perfectly flew inside the musket rifle's barrel, and soon, the two bullets inside the barrel collided. Bam! Crack asterisk the musket rifle cracked in half and exploded into pieces. King Klaus was hit by the aftermath and was sent flying backwards, while Isaac's musket rifle landed on the ground in thousands of tiny pieces. Isaac lowered his arm and looked at his broken gun with emotion, I am sorry. His pained eyes became enraged as he saw King Klaus lying on the ground. Chapter 223, Mythical Legacy Aw! Oh. King Klaus rolled on the ground in agony while holding his face. His mask that was covering his face only moments ago was broken into pieces next to him. His face was bloodied with broken pieces of musket rifle stuck on his skin. Arg! He screamed and looked at his HP, first time in his life, he felt genuine fear and panic. HP, 1 460th, and no. His face became even paler as he heard footsteps behind him. He turned around and saw Isaac walking with cold eyes. P please. Mercy. King Klaus kowtowed on the ground with his forehead touching the snow ground. I I will do anything. My family is very wealthy. I can give you everything you want. You want money? No problem. Do you want women? Easy. I can give you literally everything. Isaac touched the corner of his lips, which were still bleeding. Also, when he was listening to King Klaus ramblings, he noticed that he couldn't hear anything with his left ear because it was sliced off. He was currently half deaf, and the ringing noise was making him go crazy. After not hearing anything from the white-haired youth, King Klaus gulped, D did you hear me? Shut up, Isaac said and squeezed the trigger. Bang! King Klaus' head exploded. Into a bloody mist. You killed player King Klaus, 3000 XP earned. Level up. Level 37 to level 38. Isaac dropped his flintlock pistol next to King Klaus' corpse. 
he turned around and, with heavy steps, walked away. As far as his eyes let him see, there was destruction. Destroyed forest with mountains crumbled apart. It was like a battle of titans that happened only a second away. Isaac staggered back and forth, barely able to keep standing. He soon found a wooden log and sat down with an exhausted look. Ding ding, player King Klaus dead. Contenders, 1. Legacy tournament has ended. Congratulations, player Wraith, winner. Isaac muttered and looked straight towards the sky, which was becoming brighter. Crunch behind him, footsteps appeared. He didn't turn his head because he knew who it was. The man with a white ski mask sat down on the wooden log. Both of them looked at the destruction around them with similar looks. Neither of them spoke a single word. The silence lasted for over ten minutes. Congratulations. Until finally, the man with a white ski mask opened his mouth. Thanks. Isaac said with a tired tone. Tired? He asked and saw Isaac nodding with an exasperated look. You should be proud you did something that seemed impossible. Oh. What's that? Isaac asked. Well, Klaus is something you could call a cheater. Cheater? Isaac frowned, and the first thought that appeared on his mind was hacking. What do you mean? King Klaus was one of the privileged ones. He sighed and continued. I don't like how Arthur allowed some of the members from richer families to enter the world ahead of everyone else. Why? Isaac frowned. How does that make him a cheater? During his beta testing days, he found something that was accidentally added in the game, and because he found it, it was too late to stop because only way to stop Klaus from using the knowledge would be to forbid him from playing, which isn't possible. Isaac nodded and asked, what did he find? The secret knowledge about marksmen. The man said suddenly and stepped on the snow. A footprint appeared on the snow ground. Isaac looked at the footprint, and it resembled of a map. He found a map, and that allowed him to know the best starting stats for marksmen and how to receive two of one of the strongest skills. Oh! Isaac never understood how someone could get two very overpowered skills, but now he did. But, he still had a question. Why did you allow him to join the tournament if he was a cheater in your opinion? I didn't he found some kind of artifact that gave him one of the spots as legacy contender. Lucky. Isaac was impressed by how lucky one person can be. Yeah, but I am glad that he lost. The man patted his shoulder and finally asked a question that had been haunting his mind, do you want to be my legacy carrier? Isaac looked at his eyes and saw the hope in them. He took a deep breath and smiled, yes. The man smiled underneath the mask and snapped his fingers. Snap ding ding, legacy received. Simo Heiha, the White Death, wants you to be his legacy carrier. Legacy, White Death, Legacy Rank, Mythical, Class, Marksman, Accept, Reject, So. This is your name, ha. Huh? Isaac smiled and looked at him. Simo took off his mask and revealed his disfigured face first time to Isaac. Isaac widened his eyes and saw the jaw being completely disfigured looking somewhat monstrous. Simo touched his jaw and smirked, explosive bullet. How did you receive it? Isaac asked with curiosity, his eyes still lingering on the disfigured part. It was during a war. He shook his head, not wanting to talk about it, it was during later phases of the war, and someone was lucky enough to hit me with an explosive bullet. Simo then grinned and looked at Isaac, make a promise to me. What is it? Isaac asked. Don't use explosive bullets, they are for cowards, Simo said with a chuckle and stood up. Accept or reject, it is time to make your choice. Isaac turned his head towards the holographic screen in front of him, and his eyes lingered on the accept, reject, he had already made up his mind. His finger touched, accept, ding ding, legacy received. Legacy, white death, legacy rank, mythical, ding ding, name, wraith, level. 38. HP. 525-525 Lizard Scale Armor Effect. XP. 1,809,700. SP. 20. White Coins. 202,323. Title. Adventurer. Class. Marksman. Legacy. White Death. Legacy Rank. Mythical. STR. 50 Max. AGI. 80. VIT. 80 plus 100. STA, 
50, pre, 120 plus 50, cha, 30, dex, 61, map, inventory, help, friend list, party, log out, good precision LV1, improves the shot accuracy by 1%, illusionary shot, you can shoot an illusionary bullet, icy shot, you can freeze your opponents with a well-aimed shot, fear disperse, reduces the player's fear by 10%, Titles, Clearer of Dungeons, Unequipped. Legacy Skill, White Death, White Death. During this state, player will be immune to death. Chapter 224, White Death. Rumble asterisk in the sky, thunder rumbled. The sound of thunder echoed far away, all the way to World of Four Seasons. Once again, citizens of every age turned their gazes towards the sky, where the sound of mighty thunder was heard, but no sign of lightning. Back in the white online. Simo grabbed his gun from his back and touched it tenderly. You are now my legacy carrier. Isaac stood up and saw himself being a head taller than Simo, which was one of the first times he was actually taller than someone around him. His focus wasn't on that, but on the new skill he received. White death. During this state, the player will be immune to death. What is this state? He asked from Simo, who turned his gaze away from his gun. In that state, you will be hyper-focused in literally everything, and you managed to enter that state during your match against Klaus. How did I manage to do that? Isaac asked and remembered the weird sensation he had and the impossible shot he did. Only the person who could understand the meaning of my words can enter that state, but even then, it is very difficult. Simo grabbed a handful of the snow and moved it around his palm. You only understood a fraction of my words but even then, you managed to enter that state. Then, what else could it be other than eyesight? Isaac questioned. That is your job to find out. Simo clenched his fist, and once he opened it again, the snow had disappeared. That state is dangerous, it will reduce your stamina with scary speed, and if you don't know how to stop the state, you will die. Wasn't I immune to death during that state? Isaac asked. Even though he got answers, more questions haunted his mind. That state won't last forever. Simo turned his head and looked him straight in the eye. You might be thrown away from that state if you are getting too much of beating, or you simply lose concentration. Isaac became serious and understood that it was far from a reliable skill. Look at your stats you might notice something different, Simo told him. Isaac then finally saw the stats and was shocked. 100 extra on vitality and 50 extra on precision? Simo nodded. That is one of the reasons why legacies are so important. You basically received enough stat points for the next 15 levels. Isaac nodded but then asked, Does godly legacy give more? Are you having second thoughts? Simo asked and looked closely at his facial expressions. Isaac chuckled and shook his head. No, I just want to know more about godly legacies. One day I might have to fight against one of them. Yes. Simo understood that the humanity isn't united yet, godly legacies will give more than mine, but some are simply overpowered. Isaac's face became serious, and he nodded with understanding, I won't disappoint you. Simo waved his hand, I have faith in you, but you also have a long way ahead. You might need years before you can fully understand the true extent of your powers. Isaac and quickly assigned his 20 stat points. AGI 80 to 100, SP, 20 to 0. Isaac waited for several more seconds and then felt slightly disappointed that he didn't receive another skill from getting to 100 as he got with precision. I think it's time for you to leave this place. Simo looked around, and before Isaac could say anything, he continued, but, before that, Isaac saw him stretching out his hand, which was carrying his gun. Take this, Simo said while tenderly looking at his gun, which had been with him for a very long time. What? Isaac exclaimed and looked at the gun in front of him, which was emitting some mysterious power, what about you? My legacy carrier needs a weapon powerful enough to carry the power. Without this gun, you will never be able to touch the true limit of my powers. Simo said and forced the gun on him. Isaac took the gun and instantly felt a connection with the gun. Like the gun was the third limb he never had. A notification popped up in front of him. The Mosin Nagant M28-30 acquired. 
The Mosin Nagant M28-30, mythical. Reload 5 seconds 10 shot ammo capacity. Wait. It doesn't need bullets. Isaac, at first, was utterly shocked at the info, but then he noticed something strange. Simo chuckled and shook his head. Mythical weapons don't need bullets. Then. How does it work? Isaac looked confused. Try it. Simo stepped to the side and crossed his arms. Isaac aimed his newly acquired gun towards a nearby tree. His fingertip touched the cold steel and felt power surging through him. It was like he was holding a weapon of mass destruction in his hands. Fire! Simo instructed. Isaac pulled the trigger, and the next thing was something he had never felt before. Bang! His consciousness was separated from his body and was connected with the bullet. He felt the rush and adrenaline of the bullet. Soon, his consciousness returned, and he saw the tree in the distance, which the bullet struck, exploding. Arg! Isaac staggered backwards and looked at his shoulder that was dislocated. You alright? Simo asked and grabbed his dislocated shoulder. Why yes, Isaac replied while biting his lip. Crack! Simo twisted the shoulder, and the bones returned to their previous locations. Isaac carefully moved his shoulder and took a deep breath. How can I use the weapon if my shoulder gets dislocated every time I use it? You don't have to worry about dislocating your shoulder. Simo suddenly said and saw Isaac's confused face, the gun was testing you. Did I pass? Isaac asked and felt the weapon in his arms vibrating. You did. Simo smiled and raised his head towards the sky, where thunder was raging. It's time for you to go. He put his hand forwards and said, Good luck, son of winter. Thanks. Isaac shook his head and saw Simo disappearing into thousands of snowflakes. Cool. He opened the interface and pressed, Log out, his long day in the white online had come to an end. Chapter 225, Wraith's Fame In a room that was lit up with a chandelier. A yellowish hue colored the room in soothing and warm colors. Outside the window, snowflakes were dropping down and landing softly on the snowy ground, while men and women of every age walked in the streets of the neighborhoods with happy faces. Suddenly, the white-haired youth in the large and comfy bed twitched. Ah! Isaac slowly opened his eyes and instantly felt like something was wrong with his body. Arg! He grabbed his stomach and rolled in the bed in agony, what the hell? It feels like I have eaten till my belly was completely full. He grabbed his headgear and took it away. The skin suit that was covering his body got sucked inside the headgear. Isaac rubbed his painful stomach and grimaced, Arg! What the hell? It feels like I have eaten ten cows. After ten minutes of rolling in the bed in agony, the pain started easing up. Isaac finally managed to stand up, and he quickly grabbed the headgear, stuffed it inside the black box, and hid it inside the wardrobe. I wonder what the time is. He walked all the way to his desk and grabbed his phone that was on the charger. Once he opened the phone, he was surprised that the time was only 3 p.m., but when he saw the date, he was shocked. What? He screamed and went to the calendar, and it showed the exact same date. I have been in the game for four hours? Isaac scratched his head and felt like it was unreal. He felt relieved and understood why his stomach was aching so much. He ate so much during four hours, it wouldn't be surprising if his stomach exploded. They have to fix that. Isaac stuffed his phone back into his pocket and grabbed his laptop from the desk before returning to his comfy bed. Ah! A moan of satisfaction left his mouth as he felt like he was lying on top of marshmallows. After sleeping on hard ground for several days, the rare sense of satisfaction struck him. No more back pain. Isaac used the laptop's mouse and double-clicked on the internet browser. The first thing he went to check out was the forums. He didn't expect to see anything interesting, but soon his eyes almost popped out of the sockets. On top of the forum page, he saw a post with a hot tag. Wraith stream clip. Click click he instantly double clicked and entered the post. He saw a row of texts and a video clip. Isaac started reading the text slowly, and once the person who made the post asked if Marksman's class was really weak, he understood the seriousness of his actions. Maybe because of him, Marksman class's reputation will have significant change, 
and some might buy a new VR helmet to test it. Isaac scrolled down and started reading the comments. Most of the comments asked who the white-haired youth in the clip was. Hundreds of replies were below those comments. Some even sent Isaac's stream link in the comment section. Tap Tap Isaac started writing Stream King's website and quickly pressed enter. The familiar site of the Stream King website became visible. He went to his account page and looked at his follower count. His eyes widened in shock after seeing way too many numbers. Before the forum post, he was sitting around 100 followers. Now, it was over 5,000. First time in his life, he felt somewhat fearful of the fame he was receiving. He started playing alone and never wanted to enter the spotlight, but now, no matter what he does, he will be recognized as one of the greatest marksman players. Isaac left his account page, and from the corner of his eyes, he saw Underlord stream bustling as always. He wanted to calm his nervous heartbeat and decided to join the stream and enjoy it for several hours before going to spend time with his family. Click Underlord stream came visible on the screen, and Isaac, out of instinct, looked towards the chat but the things they were talking about shocked him. They were talking about him. Asterisk 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 asterisk, tyrant, when will Wraith stream? I have waited for the whole day. Asterisk 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 asterisk, that's right. It felt like an eternity waiting, and in the end, he didn't even stream. Tyrant. I don't know, he must have been busy today. Asterisk 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 asterisk, is he going to stream tomorrow? While watching the chat, he didn't notice Underlord's face in the stream. Underlord was walking in the busy streets and looked at his chat with annoyance. Wraith. 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 You guys have been talking about him for the entire stream. This is my stream, so why are you focused on someone else? He clicked his tongue and felt annoyed like never before. He felt like closing his stream and releasing his anger somewhere else, but he was getting good subscriptions today and it would be a waste to end it so soon. Relax. Wraith can have his one day of fame, but in the end, he will be buried in the sea of hopelessness after noticing that he can't defeat top streamers like me. Isaac closed the internet completely after not successfully managing to calm his nerves. Instead, it became even more chaotic. He closed the laptop and put it away. Isaac stood up from the bed and stopped in front of the frosty window. A layer of snow was covering most of the window, but he could still see all the way to the city in the distance. It was filled with bright lights while cars moved back and forth between streets. Happy families with warm winter clothing were walking in the streets. Some of them carried boxes containing VR helmets, and some had gift packs. Isaac rubbed his eyes and wondered aloud, since when did I have such good eyesight? He had always had good eyesight but never has he been able to see clearly the people from over a kilometer away. Weird. He shook his head and closed the curtains.